Welcome to the Chelsea Fancast, fueled by Guinness, powered by Celery. I am, of course, Stamford Chidge, and this it's Friday. It's just gone half past seven. It's not Crackerjack, no. It's the Chelsea Fancast Friday night preview show, and I am joined, of course, by the legend that is Jonathan Kidd. Oh, how lovely to be called a legend, Chidge. Thank you so you much. You are, mate. You're, well, in my eyes, anyway. Yeah, but I think you're the only person. But that's lovely to know. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are there you we well? How are you? Uh, yeah, um, and I was hors de combat on Monday, so we missed a show. Uh, I had a stinking cold. I've still got it, but it's not as bad as it was. Because we so, were due to do in off the post. If we do it now, it'll be uh, somewhat it'll out of date. But we'll be the last it. post, won't it? It'll be. Yeah, it, it, it'll be every, every single post will be. Uh, yes, of course, things have changed rather a lot since then. I know. I do feel a bit bad, but I, I, I just thought, you know what? If I do the show on Monday. I had I had like a full day of clients on Tuesday. I just thought I'm going to screw myself up for that, and I'm not going to do it. So I'm going to behave myself and be sensible. No, rightly so, rightly so. Here we go. So, um, how are you? Uh, good, good. I've had a I've had a good week. Thank you. I've almost finished me uh, my book on um, uh, on voiceovers on acting, mm-hmm. which I'm going to self publish. Which is going to be fun to see whether or not I can uh, sell a couple of copies. You know, I think I might give a lot of copies away. Uh, I need to have. A, I'll need to have a. Um, uh, what you call them when you you talk about? I forgot the name for it. A launch, yeah, a launch. I'll launch, a book launch. Yeah. I'll have to give it. Have to give it a launch. So, uh, um, uh, I don't know where that's going to be. But anyway, yeah, there are lots of things happening. I've got to do a, an audition for a kid show this weekend, which I've no desire to be in. So uh, that's going to be fun. Nice. Um, but yeah, yeah, looking forward to the game tomorrow. Not having, uh, not having to put up. Having had to put up with the. Uh, the madness of the international break, which, um, you know, I, I'd say I enjoy watching England play quite competently. I like that because there are a couple of really fantastic players. Foden is a wonderful player. It's it's a, it's a joy to watch that. But at the same time, uh, um, there are a couple of lumbering idiots who seem to get picked quite a lot. Which I, of, I have absolutely mm, fucking no zero interest. interest. No, you have none. I know. Couldn't I know. give a flying shit, mate. And I'd like to have seen Palmer get a game. And it was interesting because... I'm of, delighted he didn't. I mean, yeah, he didn't yeah. get injured. Well, find it funny you should say that because I'm about to talk about that in the press conference bit when we get down I mean, to that. You yes. can't, you can't, the trouble with, no, is it that way or is it that way? And why does my why does my finger disappear? It's like magic, isn't it? But wrong magic. Yeah, so one, our context, it sounds really bad. Yes, I was, worried, I was actually worried what on earth he was talking about for a second. I'm just going, trying to encourage you to introduce Martin. Oh, were you? Were you? Yeah. Hey, I forgot to say about Martin, of course. He's sharp. He's a compendium of knowledge. He's as bright as a button. Shall I play it again this time? Oh, have, you got, have, you got, have you got music that we'll I've get sued for same... not having the copyright for? I've got the same music as last time. Good Lord. <laughs> Deary me. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, you know. So it sounds like I've been put on hold. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. Um, yeah. This is incidental music. We are not breaking copyright copyright laws in any way, shape, or form. Martin, how are you before the mad bugger explodes down there of I don't know lunacy or whatever? I'm oh, very good, thank you. You talk about. I hate hearing people moaning about England. I have to watch Ireland. We are mm. beyond shite. Even mm. the John O'Shea revolution lasted all of 45 minutes, and I remembered that Jordan Shakiri was still a professional football player. Good grief. He looks like a bit. He looks like a beer barrel on legs. Wow! But he could take a he could take a brilliant free kick. So there you go. But yeah, apart from that, but a had a nice relaxing week, and nothing mad has happened at Chelsea at all. So I don't know what the hell we're going to talk about. No, no, nothing to see here. Nothing to no, see nothing here. Nothing to see here, Governor. Nothing, nothing to, see to see here at all. No, nothing yeah. to see. Uh, in which case, we'll get on with it. Uh, so as ever, do not forget you can uh, watch this show live now. We live. Are- Live. Can, Live. I just, before, before, can I just say, oh. Elliot Sherman, don't rub it in, mate. Is it, as he, what's he said? Ireland would, do you know what I can do? Everybody can see what he <laughs> says. <laughs> really? Really? Look at that! As if by magic. There you go, Martin. You no dirty. hiding place now. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, I, was, I had, it on the, had it on the comments tab, so yeah. yeah. I've, I've, I, I'm one of the few people who actually saw Declan Rice play for Ireland live. Yeah, congratulations, well, look, you know, on, congratulations on his 53rd international cap yesterday. Yeah, well, listen, um, for anybody wanting to post uh things on the comments, I now have the I figured out how to put them on screen, so you you better be careful what you say. So, there you go, that's all I'm saying. Anyway, don't forget you can listen, listen to the show live 
live. And uh, as well as watching it on Facebook and YouTube at the same time, I think in the old days they used to call this a simulcast. But anyway, uh, yeah, Mixler, Chelsea-fancast.mixlr.com. Uh, it's got a great chat page, as does the YouTube and the Facebook. So if you want to make any comments during the show, uh, we'll try and keep an eye on them. And if they if they if they amuse me, I will put them on the screen. More to the point, if I remember, I will put them on the screen. Uh, of course, you can follow us on all the socials at Chelsea Fancast and. Uh, uh, listen to the podcast, which we put up afterwards on Acast, Spotify, Apple, and all good podcast platforms. And, of course, make sure you like, subscribe, and leave us a very sweet review. Uh, while I'm at it, uh, Patreon. Of course, we have a Patreon account, so if you want to bung us a few shekels every month, uh, keep me away from the debtor's prison, um, you can do so. Uh, what do you get for this in return? Well, uh, you're supposed to get premium content, tears, and all that stuff. I can't be asked with that. Come on. How long have you lot known me? But you, you get my undying love. Is, is, is that enough? Maybe not. If it's not enough, I will actually get you uh, a Kerry Dixon uh, mini banner sent into the post if you want one and you let me have your address. And of course, you will also get uh, invited to our Discord group, which is basically like Mixler 24-7 and a jolly good laugh. It is too. Now, um, you might be aware, <laughs> talking about nothing happened at Chelsea recently, um, it appears I went viral somewhat, uh, largely because of this wonderful, beautiful photograph here. There you go. I was wishing everybody a happy St. Paddy's Day. And of course, advertising uh, the, our lovely, if they sell Connor, we riot t-shirts. Um, and I got abused by all the, you know, the bedroom wankers um, who, and some of whom, you know, run massive accounts as bedroom wankers. I just want to say, right here and now. Thank you so much for all the free advertising you gave us by blasting this all over social media. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, we've also got mugs. Uh, I should show you what the mugs are. There you go. We've got white ones and ones with blue inside and a blue handle, and they're very lovely. Um, if you want uh, these beautiful items, just go to the chelseafancast.com website. There's a merchandise section. Um, basically, all you have to do is figure out what size you want, where you live, uh, and let us know. Email us at thechelseaspecial at gmail.com and we will get one out to you. So there we go. Uh, enough pluggery from me. Um, it is going to be time for us to kick off with the main affair, which, of course, is JK's presser. Oh, oh you've thrown oh, it upon me, it. I didn't realise it was going to be so soon. Oh, my God. Um, you can really change your background for this bit, JK. You should actually have the press yeah. conference i have i have a, i have a i have a, a sting for that a i have a sting for that i'm gonna i'm gonna find it while, while you're doing all of that i'm gonna find it yes okay rightly so you're okay. absolutely right martin i will get one and change the background accordingly for the next uh, time i do this absolutely correct i need to have a a kind of table don't i or something i'll tell you what i could do i could use just one do of the, the just do the back screen they have for those Stupid press conference now with about a million sponsors on them. That's true. That's true. I'm sure oh, there's you... a stock shot of it somewhere. I'm going to get a picture of Potter. That would be quite good, wouldn't it? Behind just me. Position yourself in front of him. Do you like my picture of Costa there? He was about to yawn. Do you see that? Yeah. I've, actually, I've got three more pictures of him yawning after that. All I got was him yawning. It was really annoying. Um, I had my camera with me at. Uh, I just seem to remember the last, the last time he celebrated a league title with a Chelsea shirt. All the players' kids just covered him in the silly string and glitter. Yeah, it was that's, really that's, strange. He was like, "It's happened later on." You're absolutely right. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, oh, look. Hope you want to might want to touch on talk sport. I think when we were saying nothing had happened in the week, it was it was satire, David. Hope you it might. Was, want it was to touch it was highly sarcastic. Sport views because, on Chelsea yeah. club, CST letter to the club. I think we will be um, pa yeah. perhaps is, diving is, into that. Yeah, yes. And is David Hurst the former Sheffield? I don't know. Is he? If he is, yes, he must be. If he is, he welcome. <laughs> Yeah, and if well, he isn't, so welcome what, still. What happened to the what happened to the presser, JK? Oh yeah, Ch Chich is pushing me into the presser. Oh, it's just that we got a guest on in fifteen minutes, and I know how long your summaries take, mate. Longer than oh, the presser. No, well, I'll, I'll I'll abridge it, Chich. I'll be I'll be brief. <laughs> What's she got to do with it? Abridge it. Oh, Chich. Oh, <laughs> Chich. Wow. Oh, hey, thank you. Hey, thank you. Oh thank God, you. I'm going to have to lie down <laughs> after that. Bloody hell. I'm I'm here all week. Oh, bloody hellfire. OK. Anyway, this press conference started annoyingly because I went onto the Chelsea FC on YouTube with, with Poch going, ha, 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 ha. And I thought, 
Are we are we not privy to the beginnings of these press conferences? Is it actually a laugh a minute with Poch and we don't know about that at all? And he's actually very happy. And then when the questions start, he gets rather morose and uh, and just toes the line. But anyway, I was bemused by that. But also this took place yesterday, Friday. So um, which will, of course, completely cock up any attempt to predict a team, as you'd expect, because some of them that he said won't be playing. He said, well, they haven't trained with us. We'll have been will have trained today. Anyway, um, uh, it was, I find it all a bit disarming, this laughter business. And then he started and uh, and it was a young lady who asked very interesting questions, actually. Um, she started by saying, uh, asking about injury, who's available. Um, uh, and he said, well, it, it, he said Enzo, for example, is not back yet from the uh, from the journey to uh, uh, to Argentina, which didn't you know, really augur well, did it? Um, and um, uh, and they're having to assess Chilwell who apparently got another knock. Yeah, he got dead leg. I saw it happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're not sure whether he'll be playing on Sunday, yes. But he, he she was then asked... He, she was, seem he, to impre- sorry to interrupt, he didn't seem to impress that, with that, yeah. He didn't seem too impressed with Chilwell having played both games. Well, in fact, I'm about to get on to that, Martin. Well, ooh, ooh, well done. Ooh. Well, I'm happy. I'm happy for interjections because this girl said this... I wish I knew her name. She's always very... Uh, she asked interesting questions. Were you surprised? I'm sorry, girl. I should say woman. I do apologize. Were you mm. surprised? Chile, given um, given his injuries, played twice. Now you'd have thought, wouldn't you? Really, in this day and age, I mean, just any day and age, that that you don't worry if a player t- plays twice in a row because that should be quite normal, shouldn't it? But clearly, with this bunch of of I don't know medical um, misfits, uh, we have no. I, it's it's a good question. Um, I thought it was a weird sort of comedy moment when Poch actually didn't. He said, you were surprised or I was surprised. And she said, no, you, you were you surprised? And he said, yes, surprise. He didn't play for us after Brentford and only played a few minutes against Leicester in the FA Cup, which I must admit, when on reflection, is a bit odd, isn't it? The fact that he suddenly plays two games for England. But um, anyway, um, he then waffled a bit, as Poch tends to when he doesn't really know what to say in his instance. Yes, no, need to play in our own club. What he wanted to say was, actually, that I gleaned from this was, yes, he found it very peculiar that he played twice for England because he didn't actually think he was fit. Yeah. Anyway, so he plays plays twice for England. I didn't think he played badly in the Belgian game. Um, I, they think they're trying to get him to play because, uh, what's his face? Uh, the Man United sure. left back, sure, is injured, still injured. And so some... Um, Trippier. Trent, uh, Trippier as well. And Trippier's not been playing well. Yeah, so I'll, I'll just say words and you fill in the players for me. because It's, it's like a game, isn't it? It is, it is. And also, Terence Trent Alex- yep. yeah, Yes, well done, well done, well done. <laughs> 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 you all forgot Levi Colwell. Yeah, yeah and Colwell, and Colwell oh, of course. Oh, yes. yeah, yeah, Colwell, yeah. Good Colwell, point, still, still with the toe injury. For fuck's sake. Anyway, um... Uh, anyway, yes, he's saying, surprised he didn't play for us after Brentford only played a few minutes against Leicester in the FA Cup. Yeah, no. And he waffled. Yes, no, I think no. Like I know, yes, we need to see if uh, he can be available. Uh, asked about Lavia. Um, Lavia out. How is he? Only played 32 minutes. And um, he said, uh, it's a difficult situation. Sad. Um, he arrived with problems from Southampton. Well, why the fuck? Well, why the hell are they buying him? Buy him then. Absolutely. Absolutely right. Anyway, he said he hopes he comes back. Um, he'll come back in uh, for pre-season. Oh, that would be good, wouldn't it? Yeah, that would be great for somebody they paid forty million for, whatever it is. Um, she asked then, Cole Palmer, how is he? Because he didn't play, and she said it's only a very small window of opportunity. And, I, and I'm afraid, I, I, looking at all these players, what's his face? Uh, uh, um, Menu, for example, it seems to have taken over in the pecking order. Who played very well, but like I don't Maynou. think it's the same same skill set as Cole, who is a game changer. Different player, mate. Completely different player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. completely, completely. So I don't quite understand hopefully, how he. Hopefully, hopefully, hang on, where's my mic gone? Uh, ho- yeah. Hopefully, uh, Menu, whatever his name is, he'll Maynou. replace that prick, Maynou. prick Henderson. Well, no, I think he's going to. I get the impression, you know, it's like Henderson and Maguire. You know, they seem to be... De- I don't understand Southgate's mindset when he still keeps playing. Maguire made another terrible mistake against uh, Brazil. It, I mean, it's just for fuck's sake. It's not good enough. Anyway, um, uh, Sterling. Apparently, Nonny uh, gave an interview yesterday saying how hard it's been for Sterling and how excellent he is in training and how uh, important he is as a senior player to the team, which is something that we've talked about but never actually 
pursued that never thought that because we've we've said perhaps there's a reason why uh, excuse me the players you know seem to forgive all this situation is because he's he's their mate and he offers lots of advice and he's as we know he's a very lovely man so right this was just repeated um and then Poch um was asked how important is he to you as you look to rebuild? Do you see him as you, how do you see him? Where do you see him as you move forward? Which he didn't really want to answer. So we got a complete load of, I even double checked this on Football London to see how they'd make sense of this. Because he just went sort of, you know, a uh, uh, good teammate can talk. We need to accept situation, deal with very experienced player. Uh, also, uh, I was uh, I was also suffering anger of fans, me as well. Uh, Raheem experienced and understanding we need to move on. Ah, and that was it, really. Need to build a strong relationship with everyone. Need effort from everyone to convince fans we are in a very good way. Um, teammates love is then it was this bizarre. Teammates love teammates. Teammates need to love the fans. Fans need to love teammates and love the club. And it's a connection we need to create. Well, I think the final sentence was good. Yeah, it is. A All connection. you need is love. Yeah. All you need. Exactly. Ba -da -ba -da. exactly. Um, and then he said, if you want to see your club doing well, I thought, oh, that's interesting. It's going to happen. Hire a decent manager. What did that mean? It's going to happen. Expectation is so big. He really struggled with an answer to that question. Anyway, um, uh, Burnley, asked about Burnley, uh, difficult. Now, this was just absolutely bizarre. He completely blew smoke up, up uh, company's arse. Completely. But I he mean, always does. He always know, does. Was, this is the worst, Chidge, that I can remember it. The worst. It was it complete it's rubbish. I watched this. It was it's, rubbish. A fucking bottom. He's brilliant. He's doing fantastically yeah. this oh, season. Oh, it's not about the oh, results. Oh, it's about the performances. Oh, Chidge, absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. It was fucking bizarre. What is that? What is that? Anyway. Um, it's the Guardiola trick of him blowing smoke up everyone manager's arse who, is a, who isn't a threat to him. He's yeah, trying, to do, yeah, he's trying to do the that's same true. thing. Yeah. That's, yeah, yeah. How we, that's how we knew we'd done a good job when Guardiola was pissed off after, the, after we got the draw against him at the Etihad. That's true, because he then gets annoyed, doesn't he? He, gets, and he, gets, he yeah. takes it out on the, uh, on the interviewer. Anyway, yeah. target for 11 games left, he was asked. Win the next game. Yes, all right. Most yeah. important is to get the best balance. Yes, all right. Then this fucking idiot journalist at the end of it goes, oh, God, <laughs> so pisses me off. Some of these idiots. Us, uh, at Lavia again. He said, we arrived with a problem. Is this a new problem? Who gives a fuck? He's injured. Anyway, um, and he says, I can't explain. I'm not doctor. <laughs> I don't think it's a fair question, actually. And yeah, I, mean, I know. What, I know. But one, one of the lads in the in the comments there has more or less said exactly the same thing. If you have no, no, I, I know, I get it. But what my point is is that we only have a small amount of time asking the manager stuff. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. He, he's done something else. Yeah, yeah. But no, my 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 point about it is not not that the question was a good question. It was that surely we can have a question about something else, tactics or whatever, rather than go back at the end of the broadcast section to a question that was asked at the very beginning. And so that's why I'm despairing. You're not going to get questions about tactics in the broadcast part of a press conference. Well, you uh, the, not in this country no, anyway. No, you not do. in this country. No, you not do, in... Martin. You do occasionally. He's he's very good at replying to particularly the, the there are two women who ask questions. And if they say things like you pressed in this one, you pressed in that, he actually says good question. Yeah, and then he's not having to, because he's not having to answer shite. <laughs> indeed, and answers it. And he's happy with that. And he actually, one of them, when she asked a question like that, he said, that is a very good question the end of, at the end of it. Thank you. So he wants that kind of question. Instead of which, we're asked again about Lavia. The guy has already said, this is the last question, the press guy there. So you think, oh, God. Um, but she then, uh, to be fair, she, she then, uh, he then says, have you ever had a situation like this? Every week, almost eight to nine players out. And he said, 13, he said. And he said before, no, and then it ended. So we we sort of, we had an element of of, um, uh, of uh, self-belief. We had a um, the stock response to any opposition team that they're fantastic and wonderful. Um, we discussed the fact that Lavia, we've, we've, we've already established, will be out until uh, he's hoping for a decent pre-season. And, um, uh, and yeah, so I, I just found it, it's the usual unsatisfactory press conference where you try and get a little bit out of it and the odd little bit you get out of it is is uh 
it's a pretty meaningless really what is the point of them what is the point of them i mean they're they're utterly utterly pointless yeah can't people this is like like a it's it's like the emperor's new clothes on crack isn't it yeah yeah, we all know it's fucking pointless the club must know it's pointless the journalists must know it's pointless why do they do it or why don't they do it better I think it's more the be- it's the latter of those those questions you just asked. Why the fuck don't they do it better? Yes. Why aren't the questions prearranged? Why aren't they given to him and somebody then says, "Here's a question from so and so. We've got this one," and they then look through the question, see which is one that that to make the whole thing more interesting. I mean, j- j- if you want a barometer of how utterly stupid and facile and banal this all is, if you ever go to a Q and A or something where you are required to ask a question of people who are on a panel. There are people who are yet to be discovered in the Amazon rainforest who know that if somebody asks the question that you want to ask before you get to ask it, you ask a different question because you're expected to have the wit and the wherewithal to come up with another question that is different. These overpaid fuckwits are so lazy that they just say, oh, fuck, I'm going to ask my question anyway. Yeah. I mean, shoot me now. I can't stand it anymore. And you don't even watch the fucking things. No, that's why I don't, mate. I did today. That's, 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 why, why, I never, well, that's why I never did until you get in a... So I made you. Something <laughs> silly. I won't, I won't watch it. I know. Uh, no, I'm I'll just do something similar to the pool interview. Only one of them. Right, collate the questions. One interviewer. That's it. And have someone at the club actually just stopping this bollocks of repeat repetitive questions. But also questions that are, are significant. You know, I mean, they, they should almost say uh, at the very beginning, uh, injuries. We'll talk about that now. We'll tell you what the who the people are still injured. And he's always asked, he's always asked an opinion. He always says, I don't know. I don't know whether they are. We haven't seen them in training as if somehow he's not given ever any any uh, um, information about what the state of these really rather important players are. You think he would know. I find that really absurd. The fact he always says, I'm not, I don't, I don't know. We haven't seen him. So he well, can't Next be time have the doctor training. at the fucking press conference. Indeed. But, but also <laughs> there's this thing of saying, I don't, uh, um, we, I, he must be injured because I haven't seen him at training. I mean, for fuck's sake, he actually said that today. He must be injured because I haven't seen him at training. Well, well, that's just shit. I mean, you know, you should be interested in the players, Potch. Sorry. No, well, I, I think that's his I, I way of saying I'm not going to say he, anything. Yeah, I think he's dead bad, isn't it? Yeah, I agree with you, Martin. You see, and Bob now has asked, is Lavia injured? No, he's not. No, Bob, Bob, Bob is, Bob is like... No, I know, I know. No, have, I know. You ever seen, have you ever seen the Young Ones episode where they get a, video, Bob, a new video Bob machine? Ultra ironic. I Bob know. is doing the classic, have we got a video? Yeah, yeah. I know, I know he yes, was. Yes, we've got a fucking video, Bob. I knew he was, but, but I was going to answer in, a, in, a, in an equally ironic way, but you've ruined the moment. Oh, I'm sorry. I always do this to you, don't I? Yeah, I'm amazed you, you still you, actually even speak to me. You know? Well, funnily enough, I've been rethinking our relationship. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't leave me, JK. Don't leave me. I'll be stranded here like a complete plum. Yeah. Uh, anyway, there we go. Wouldn't be the first time, would it? Uh, anyway, listen. I, you know, I love JK's presses. Um, we will. We are going to pick up actually on 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 the newsworthy bits of the news uh, in part three. So, in particular, uh, the injury blight that's affecting us because there's been a lot of hoo ha about that all week as a consequence of uh, Lavia in particular. And um, we will mention uh, things like the Supporters Trust and the FAB. Uh, I've actually, I've, I've actually titled it well, because I can lump it into the kind of the atmosphere and what we might expect to see on Saturday. But I've labelled it FAB TB is go because because they used to say that on Thunderbirds, didn't they? FAB yeah. Virgil. Yeah, it was the cold yes, side. They, they did. They did. They did. Yeah. So, so it's all very Thunderbirds, isn't it? Yeah. Or puppets there's a of, like there's a load of fucking puppets. Yeah. Sorry, Martin. I teed you, you up and then I you took it away from you. Punchline, yes. <laughs> I can't help it. It's the coffee, mate. I blame the coffee. Um. Anyway, uh, yeah, we will pick up on that in part three. So don't don't panic if you think we're we're ignoring it because we're not. Okay, I promise you, we are not ignoring it. So um, we are going to have uh, our opposition view in a minute or two. But before we do that, we is going to have a bit of a break. So we'll see you in a sec. Fans, real opinions. I'm Jason Cundy, 
and you're listening to Chidge and the boys on the Chelsea Football Fancast. Total nutters and proper Chelsea. And welcome back. I'm Sam Fitchidge. This is the Chelsea Fancast Friday Night Preview Show with Jonathan Kidd and Martin Wickham as well. Of course, the lovely, beautiful peeps. And uh, it's now time for this. The Opposition View. There we go. Blink and you miss it. Unlike this lovely chap who we've got returning to us. It's the lovely Adam Dennett from No Nay Never podcast, Burnley. Lovely to see you again, Adam. Yeah, good to see you guys. Um, I think uh, neither of us have really had the seasons that we probably wanted, but uh, always a pleasure to speak to you, um, you lovely folk. And yeah, I've you... particularly, particularly enjoyed JK's rants on my Twitter timeline since I was in <laughs> the... Uh, Okay, well, that that is that's cheered me up a few times this oh, season. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, well, we've been so shit on several occasions. The shitter we are, the the more amusing they are. To my my <laughs> my, how intriguing that is. I suppose the the more I lose my temper, I think that's what it is. So, oh, yeah. there we go. So I, I'm glad other people watch them other than us. Actually, that's, that's yeah, really lovely. Nice. No, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, Adam, you kind of alluded to it. I I kind of I, I, I mm, I'm kind of a bit reluctant to ask you this, but but how has Burnley's season been to date? I would imagine. Not a happy camper at the moment. Uh, no, it's been um, it's been pretty miserable um, all the way through. With probably the most optimistic that we've felt in the last few weeks, uh, but it it's just too little, too late by the looks of things. Um, just the lack of, I think, having been in the Premier League for for so long under under Dyche, and even when we weren't as good as other teams, we were always competitive and always had a way to affect the game. Whereas at the moment. We we look a lot worse than a lot of the teams that we play, and we don't have any sort of edge or way to score. We're getting bullied by by teams. Um, so if we can't beat them at football and we can't score set pieces, in fact, we're dreading conceding set pieces and crosses. It's just a very strange scenario for a Burnley fan going to a game in the Premier League to be in. Um, and we all thought it were going to be so much better after such a good good season last year hmm. it, it's i mean the the theory at the beginning a lot of a lot of outside you know people looking in which is is not always the best thing really but they were all saying that vincent company is a really good guy tries to play football the right way you played superb football in getting promoted last year um I mean, you did add to the squad. You you did you you did add a number of players to the squad, but he's kind of like trying to play out from the back and play pretty football, and you get repeatedly caught out doing it. But he he doesn't seem to want to change. I mean, does that do you, do you kind of still back him, or does that frustrate you? Uh, I think um, the there has been a lot of um, of talk about him sticking to his principles, but when we are trying to play out the back, um, it's like you, the term high risk, high reward, it's high risk, and we have we get zero no reward because reward yeah. we just get punished time and time and time again. We're not getting through the lines. We're not punishing teams at all. It's um, and it, I think it's just been the the lack of the lack of faith in maybe some of the players that did a good job last year. Like we brought in, like you alluded to, quite a lot of players last summer. Um, and we've not given some of the players that got got us promoted a fair crack, really. And and the players we brought in, particularly the attacking players, just haven't done the business. And we've got Manuel Benson sat on the bench, Zaruri out on loan at Hull. Um, Teller obviously we didn't sign, we didn't really go for, and he's done he's done very well. And is at Leverkusen, so can't really be too um, too disappointed with that. But uh, we've spent a lot of money on Trezor. Ramsey, Amdune, and it's just they're all talented individuals, but there's there seems to be a real lack of team chemistry. We've had no momentum at any point really in the season, and when the fans don't see the fight on the pitch, don't have an affinity with the players that have come in um, and aren't seen to be competing, it, it's led a lot of Burnley fans to be quite disillusioned um, and detached from from the 11 starting players on the pitch. I think we've, of the play, starting 11, 
uh, probably a month ago when we got spanked against Arsenal and Palace um, back to back, five nil, three nil. Mm. I think there were only Brownhill on the pitch from from the team that that came up last season. Um, and Charlie Taylor, but Charlie Taylor didn't really make the team last season because we had Ian Matson. Um, so are you, are you miss are you are you missing Ian Matson? Oh, he was brilliant. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. I think obviously we did we can't fault our efforts to try and get him at the end of the window last uh, last August. Um, disappointed not to, but I think we kind of all knew we were going on to um, to bigger and better better things. Uh, but yeah, he, he was fantastic for us last season. I don't think he has gone on to bigger and better things, though, has he? Because he's he's off at uh, he's at Leverkusen, isn't he? But he's playing. He's playing. That's right, Dortmund. Yeah, but he's playing. Uh, He's, he's he's back to playing fullback, which you know, and he's apparently excellent at fullback. Who'd have thought that? He, you know? Well, he played for fullback for us, yeah, yeah, all yeah, season. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. So, yeah, he got I mean, moved into midfield, and yeah, sorry, I missed the. Uh, no, no, yeah, yeah, the, the, the irony. No. <laughs> and also, some of the things you were saying are very similar to the kind of errors that we we make, particularly this playing out from the back business, where. Um, I mean, it depends on who the goalkeeper is because uh, Sanchez really likes playing it short, whereas whereas Petrovic actually he he, he doesn't prefer that he likes to boot the ball up the pitch. Or, I think or that's, play that's it longer, you know. That's been the biggest issue. I think um, the lack of faith in the goalkeeper. Um, Muric last year, Muric is great with his feet, um, and had a, he was championship keeper of the season last year, and then we've splashed nineteen million on Trafford in the summer. Obviously. England under-21 goalkeeper, but only ever played in League One. And he, he's just, I think, company's lack of, um, well, ruthlessness to be able to take him out of the firing line earlier, I think has cost us a lot this season. He, he seems to have great potential. I keep seeing him do a make a great save and you think, wow, he's a terrific goalkeeper. And then he seems to be just very slow to come out for something or intimidate Seems to be intimidated by some of the strikers, you know, who seem to get get in on, you know. Yeah, sorry. there's there's one. There's sorry, yeah. There's there's probably a mistake every week, and you can't do that in the Premier League. No, no. no. Uh, Are they just, buying players yeah. to a profile as well, Adam? Because a lot of what you sound you've said sounds like what Chelsea have been doing, where players are built specific to a profile. You've gone up. Ashley Barnes got released now. I didn't have a lot of good things to say about Ashley Barnes when he played against us. Usually, so when he when he, I saw him getting chucked out the door, I was like, "Yeah, okay, that'll that'll do us." And you know, he's he at least had a lot of the experience and you know, rolling his sleeves up that you need in a fight like this. Because at the moment, he seems to be relying on points deductions on on other teams to stay in the fight. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, definitely. I think the big characters probably helped us through last season more than we maybe realised. Um, we don't have we don't have that experience in the team at all anymore. Or like I've said a couple of times already, the fight uh, to be able to do it. We've got a bunch of semi-talented individuals from across Europe. Young, yeah, like you said, we're buying to a profile. Uh, seeing what Brighton have done. I hesitate to mention Brighton on on your show, but uh, <laughs> see what they've done and, and Brentford and following maybe a similar model where you bring someone in develop them, sell them at a, at a profit and you've got someone ready-made to come in and um, and do do a similar job. And the overturn um, of players, as like the first summer we needed to do it, we had the big overhaul um, and it all went perfectly. And this summer to do it again just seemed a bit unnecessary and Burnley spending 100 million. You couldn't help being excited while last summer were going on. But I think that's the biggest. Yeah, we've we've just shot ourselves in the foot. Adam, do you, do you, do you think? I mean, it's interesting. You know, you mentioned it, actually it's similar to what. Well, Martin mentioned it's similar to what we're doing. You you mentioned Brighton and Brentford. You've got American owners too, haven't you? And you know, I, I think if we're comparing Chelsea's current model and your current model, it does sound quite similar. I mean, I wonder if that's a coincidence with American owners. And the other kind of ancillary question to that: Are you quite happy with your American owners? Yeah, I think nothing. Uh, sorry, something needed to change. The local businessmen that um, that were running the club before, and it were getting getting too much, and we couldn't invest like we needed to because they weren't willing to take the risks um, and and dip into the pockets enough, and, and that probably resulted in the relegation a couple of years ago, uh, long term underinvestment. Uh, whereas uh, these guys have come in, they've done a lot of good work around the stadium. It looks a lot nicer. Um, the the train things with the fan experience some going well some not um but and they are as well they are very present 
the they're at the games. You see that they're at every home game in in the director's box. Um, they're constantly putting stuff on out on social media and and interacting with the fans. Obviously, brought trying to bring in investment from JJ Watt and other other sources. We've had the TV show on on Sky. Uh, I think that they're trying to do a lot of good things, and it is Americanizing a lot of it. And some fans don't like that, um, but. Yeah, it's there's it's, there's a risk to it. We've never been saddled with debt before, and obviously we are now. We've got um, we've got debt against our assets, and I think a lot of fans last year were worried about the long term. Um, like, well, the yeah, the long term stability of the club and whether it would be sustainable if we didn't manage to bounce back. Luckily, we did. Um, but you look at a lot of the clubs around us, and we've got a like. Uh, we were playing teams like Bury, Oldham, uh, Rochdale, um, when I when I were growing up, when I were I were young. So uh, to be in the position we're in, we're very privileged, and you don't want anyone taking any risks that could end up putting you in have, those sort of financial have there, positions. Have there been but, any whispers about the PSR violations or as anything like that? No, um, uh, not not yet. Um, we we had a transfer embargo last season, but that was more to do with changing accountants and um, and a delay in filing the paperwork. And I think we've probably helped by um, we're helped by the um, like the profit profitability of of when we came down. We we had a big um, big net parachute, profit last parachute season. Parachute payments as well. Parachute payments. We sold um, Corney, McNeil, um, Pope. We we brought in about seventy million and spent twenty million last year. Had the parachute payments. I think that helped pay off some of the debt as well. Uh, got a lot of outside investments. They're trying to make Burnley a more more of a European and global brand rather than just being a small small club in Lancashire. So, to be honest, Adam, that that I mean, you know, just to, I don't mean to butt in, but you know, that's Burnley. That's what. That's who you are. I mean, you know, I, I said it on because I did a piece for your show uh, last night, and I and I mentioned that at the start how much I enjoyed going up there. You know, in the autumn, not least because the weather was actually like the Caribbean, and not I didn't get frostbite for a change. But I mean, it, it, how did it's, you get away with it? <laughs> well, because well, I just I don't know, mate. Sheer luck. But you know, <laughs> when I got there, you, it just says it smells proper old school football club. Northern town, one one club town. It's it's proper. It's lovely. It's what English football is all about. You know, I mean, making it into a global European thing. I mean, mm. what is it with Americans? What is it they don't understand about the culture of the game in this country? Yeah, and I think that when we did, um, and I, I shouldn't harp on about Daesh because those times are gone. It was it was the right time to come to an end, and we needed something something fresh. But that his where what it was a reflection of the town it was hard work blood on the shirt um put it up the opposition fans you go in make it a, make it a difficult atmosphere obviously not for you guys you've battered us every time you've come up there for years and years and years no matter who's in charge um but but for you the still majority did. of teams <laughs> yeah yeah for the majority of teams we've made it difficult yeah whereas this season it's been this it's been the worst home atmosphere i've been ever really? been to in the season uh it's it's flat but the and that's it's probably some of the criticism the owners have come in for is they've actually targeted the fans sometimes and said you're not making the atmosphere that we need but when we're three nil down in 20 minutes and just get just getting hammered and there's nothing to shout about on the pitch it's it's, it's asking for trouble been, yeah and, and it's been like that all all season really it's been it has been really flat which is sad to see really it's amazing it's been such an exciting season well yeah i mean it's amazing and it's remarkable actually the similarities between what you're saying and as jk said a minute ago and what we've been saying for so much of the season you could say the same about the atmosphere at the bridge you know it, people aren't aren't going to be up for it when when we're watching poor football or losing you know it's 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 foot i mean we're not in I know it used to. Well, I mean, even I mean, JK will attest to that as as well. I, 
you know, people seem to think, oh, you know, back in the 70s and the 80s, we, when we were getting hammered 5-0, we were right behind the team. You know, we were really supporting. and see, No, we weren't. We were moaning as much as we do now. You know, this is, this is what football supporters do. Isn't it, JK? Well, there were so few of us anyway, because hardly oh, anybody ever... Hardly anybody ever turned up at the at the bridge. So, well, that's uh, why we all sang to keep warm, really. Yeah, 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 and 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 set fires going, didn't we? <laughs> I sent you that because I know that's one of your your favourite games, isn't it? You re- didn't you write about that in that in uh, in Marco's book? Yes, absolutely right. Yeah. Sorry, we should explain to Adam. Uh, Ch- Chelsea played Charlton Athletic away in the seventies, and we were so fed up and pissed off with the team and cold that we tried to burn their stadium down. <laughs> it's true. Nice. I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll message you the article after the show. You'll you'll love it. I definitely do. Anyway, we digress. Uh, they installed heating shortly after. To, <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, we, to were we were only trying to keep warm, honestly. Listen, Office of Milad. Yes, yeah, so yeah, yeah. and, and it wasn't JK who started the fire. Or Billy Joel, for that matter. Anyway, um oh, pop uh, reference. Did you get that, Adam? Yeah. We didn't start the fire. Mate. Billy Joel, hey. Before, hey. before your time, mate. Before yeah, maybe slightly. It's kind yeah, of nonsense yeah, yeah. you get on the Chelsea fan yeah, club. Yeah, it's, it's the little nuggets of, of pop <laughs> history are thrown in from time to time, you know. Uh, all right, where was I? Right, Fafana. Uh, you know, we we just we you obviously you're missing Matson. We've we've loaned you Fafana, who 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 we thought was kind of a an administrative error, really, that that they kind of they got kind of got two Fafanas. They just kind of like made a mix up or something. We haven't sung we've got two Fafanas yet, have we? When you come neither play. that's because neither of them have played. <laughs> no, indeed, well, we, we nearly we nearly signed a third one. We could have had we, three Fafanas. That's right, three Fafanas. That would have been yes. So anyway, killer, isn't it? <laughs> if we don't, if we're not talking heads, that, Adam, talking heads, yeah, you, know if, that, if you get that not, one, you didn't get that yeah. one. No, 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 I didn't. I know if, what to tell you. I do know. Sorry. <laughs> if he comes back, if he comes back next season, if we're not doing, you know, psycho killer, fa 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 mate i've just got a new song brilliant i love it when we get a new song anyway um yeah. adam where are we for farner he's done quite well for you he scored an absolute worldie against west ham he scored other goals too he's looked quite good we had no idea well we weren't that optimistic when we signed him <laughs> um at the end of january looking at his record and he came in and his first interview he said that he wasn't enjoying the bundesliga because uh he had to run too much and we said, oh yeah this is great we've <laughs> bemoaned the lack of effort on the pitch all season and we signed a guy who's openly saying he doesn't doesn't like running. Uh but he's yeah no he's done he's done very well. Sometimes looks a bit like Bambi on the ball. It it just like bounces off him and like his first touch can be a bit erratic. But he's got those moments of brilliance that um that actually gives you a chance. And and he's come up with those a few times. I don't probably a good summary. I don't know if you saw our highlights against Brentford last week, but he missed from a yard out with an open goal, actually a yard out. Oh, um, and then the um, Chelsea striker, Adam. <laughs> but then scored a lovely finish. It's like, something really. like Jackson. It's Jackson again, isn't it? Yeah. We've got another one. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, I think he's scored, is it three or four goals, set set up another couple. He's, it, well, it's a shame that he can't obviously play this weekend for us um, when he's getting into a bit of, bit of form. But I think Lyle Foster will come in and... Um, Hopefully, hopefully, do a good job. But no, really positive. I don't see how we'll keep him longer term um, with the position that we're going to be in. Um, sounds most likely similar. in the championship next yeah, season. Sounds a bit but... similar to a player you've loaned out in Michael Obafemi. So, in terms, of he could look brilliant one minute and hopeless the next. Yeah, the Ob- Obafemi signing were a bit of a bit of a strange one, anyway. Really, but he did, he's not really played. He didn't play much even in the championship. We signed him and we just loaned him, loaned him out At again. Mill, but, um, I believe. Yeah, yeah. He um, scored scored at Blackburn the other week. That that went down well with Burnley fans. That's the best thing he's done for us. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah, he's, I think, <laughs> I'm I'm not sure if Fafana will ever make it at, like a team like Chelsea, but he's got he's definitely got something. He's he's yeah. shown flashes of brilliance, and whether you get more of that. If he's getting consistent game time, time will tell. He's clearly got the stats, Adam. Somebody somewhere has looked at the stats that he's the player for us, Chelsea. 
I had I had them a minute ago. There we go. Here, here are the stats. No, oh, no, wrong one. It, it, it was all going so beautifully well. I don't know. Oh, here we go. I found it. Right, here we go. That's the stats. Four goals in 596 minutes. Thank you, Elliot. You are you are you are bringing us all down tonight with your acute <laughs> observations. But it's a goal every two games, Chidge. What's wrong with that? I suppose so. If you look at it like that, you see. There yeah. we go. You see, there are statistics. There are lies, damn lies, and then there are statistics. Yeah, exactly. Now, here's a statistic for you, Adam. Do you think uh, you can avoid relegation? I mean, look, uh, Forest got their deduction. You're only what four points away from them now. Yeah. Um, you beat. Uh, I think you beat Brentford last week, didn't you? So yeah. Well, not last week, but the last last game. Yeah, so last game. You, you've got what 11, 10, 11 games left. What's the chances? Do you think? Yeah, we've got we've got nine left, um, and in any other season we'd be dead and buried. We've mm. lost twenty out of twenty nine games. We've been hopeless, but there is still that hope. I don't. I have. I've no idea how we're still in with any sort of chance. I still don't think we'll have anywhere near enough. But with all this going on, if if we can go to if we can go to Stamford Bridge. And keep even if even if we put in another positive performance on the back of Brentford and West Ham, that should really help us going into. We've got Wolves at home on Tuesday, who are very very much depleted. I think they've only got twelve fit outfield players. Um, Gary O'Neill said today, so a lot of it is right place, right time when you uh, when you play some get uh, against some of the other Premier League teams. But say we say we get a point at Stamford Bridge somehow by a miracle, we go on on Tuesday and we've got we've carried that momentum on and we get a result against Wolves, then maybe. But for the last, probably since October, November, I've not given us any any hope. And that's after going into the season with, like I said, probably the highest expectations of, of a Premier League season that I've ever had. So it's very, very up and down. Like you yeah. said, being a football fan's always, always fun and games, isn't it? But I, well, don't, I, I, don't, I don't think we'll, we'll have enough. All right. So, I mean, how, how, do you see, how, how do you see it going on on Saturday? Um, I think we're we're better defensively than the last time um, we played you. We've uh, we've got Cullen and Burge doing a bit more protecting. Hopefully, we've got Bayer coming back into the side. A couple of January signings: um, Estev, who we obviously call Steve, um, and Asignon. And we and Murich came back in last week, which is great. And all the Burnley fans are delighted, but it was just a more of a case of why now? Why, when we're already looking doomed, would you then make the decision when we've been calling for it for months? Um, so, and it's probably too much of a small sample size to see if he will make a difference, especially when it's 2 1 at home to Brentford clinging on at the end when they had 10 men for 85 minutes. Um, but there's definitely signs was improving defensively. When you came to Turf more early this season, I think we sat here and I said, we're just wide open. We do all right initially and then teams work us out in the game and and just tear us to shreds. And mm -hmm. Sterling and Palmer that day did. And it, Jackson Jackson came on at half-time, completely changed the game after I'd sat there and watched him, like you said, not be able to hit a barn door for the first mm -hmm. couple of months of the season. He ran as ragged second half that game, and that that were up there with one of the one-sided second halves. Well, forty-five minutes of football I've I've ever seen us at Turf Moor. You could have had a, it could have been any number that that day. Mm -hmm. Um, I'd, we've been to Liverpool and Man City recently. Lost both games three-one. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it's something similar at the weekend. But I'm hoping we can put up a bit more of a fight than than we did do in the earlier part of the season. Well, you'll never you never know what Chelsea will turn up tomorrow, Adam. So I think your hope is not unfounded. Um obviously I hope uh, that we beat you handsomely tomorrow, but I really genuinely hope you guys stay up because I uh, for some bizarre reason one of my favorite away trips is 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 a you know a 5-hour drive up to Burnley, watch us play you, get frostbite uh, and then drive five hours back. But for some reason, I love it. It's a great town, and it's a great football club. It really is, and I really do hope you stay up. So there we go. You have all my best luck for that. Thanks.
I think I think, I think I've got more chance of coming on in two years' time than the next season. But well, um, if but we'll if see. you do go down, you're welcome back. You know that we'll uh, we'll come come and find you when when you come back up. But uh, you know, hopefully, we'll see you on here uh, next season. But Adam, you've been brilliant as you always are. Very generous with your time. Thank you for coming on. You've been superb as always. Thank you, Adam from No Nay Never. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Cheers, Adam. Brilliant stuff. There we go. That is the opposition view. There you go. And uh, Adam's off. We're carrying on because we've got uh, more to talk about, actually, uh, because it's uh, I thought I'd squeeze it in here because we kind of normally I'd, I'd forget otherwise. But of course, Saturday is game time, which means you can get a copy of this. Ta-da! In fact, actually, you probably get uh, April's version uh, tomorrow. I think uh, it was deadline last weekend for Arctic Cools. Um, Martin, guess what the title of my CFC UK article uh, that I wrote last Sunday before the news this week broke and will be in the next edition of CFC UK? I have no idea. The board I... are bastards. Nope. No. It's no. Injury blight. Oh, oh no. okay. Okay. Ahead of the news, as always, as always, and then behind it, because by the time that CFC UK gets published, there'll be something else that people will be waffling about. But fear not. If you want to get your copy of CFC UK and pay only a pound, hurry up, then all you have to do is to go and visit the CFC UK store, which is conveniently situated opposite Fulham Broadway Tube Shopping Centre exit kind of thing. Uh, however, if you're not lucky enough to be able to get a copy yourself, uh, you still can if you want, because we can uh, we can recommend that you actually email fanzine at cfcuk.net, uh, subscribe for a year, and you'll get it all sent to you in the post. If you live in the UK, it's 20 quid, Europe, 45 quid, rest of the world, 60 quid. Uh, also, you can get it as a digital copy, so you can get it emailed to you as a PDF if you want to. That'll cost you six quid for a year's subs and a quid each, and you can pay that via PayPal. Now, the other thing that we always love to plug at this stage of the program, or any stage of the program, really, is this, a Chelsea pitch owner's share. There you go. There's a real live one, with which is actually signed by Sir Frank of Lampard, would you believe? So there you go. Isn't it, isn't it a beautiful thing? Um, right. If you want to own a piece of Chelsea, then what you do is you uh, go to chelseafc.com and search for pitch owners. Uh, and what that means is that you will have a share in the freehold of the stadium. And, of course, that means that whatever happens to it going forward, and you know there's lots of uh, hoo-ha going on at the moment, we might be relocating. We might be re re relocating for a short time. We might be redeveloping the whole thing. We might have a new stadium somewhere else. Who knows? None of this happens unless the people, the shareholders – the Chelsea pitch owner shareholders agree to it, and they're not unreasonable people. If they think it's in the best interest of the club, they will they will agree. But if you, you get a say. That's the point. You actually have some real power. No other club has this. This is a very very useful, worthwhile thing to have, and it'll cost you about uh, 110 quid for an electronic share and 175 quid for a frame share signed by a Chelsea player. Uh, go to chelseafc.com and search for uh, Chelsea pitch owners. As I said, now actually while we're on that subject. Um, the Chelsea Supporters Trust. Uh, you may have heard of them uh, recently. I, uh, you know, a couple of people have mentioned them in the media. There was, perhaps. There was, a, few, there was a few paragraphs about. Yeah, them. maybe. maybe. Yeah. Anyway, uh, the Chelsea Supporters Trust have got an SGM, a special general meeting. They like to try and do these about three times a year, usually, and it's basically an opportunity for the members. You have to be a member to go, uh, but it's an opportunity for the members of the CST to go to a kind of a, I wouldn't call it a public meeting because of course it's members only, but it's a meeting where you can quiz the uh, members of the board that will be there on any issue going on at the moment. I think there might be a few topics that you might like to talk to the Chelsea Supporters Trust about at the moment. But the reason I bring it up here now uh, is that the special guest, because they like to have a, a, a proper guest uh, and a big Q&A, uh, it's going to be Chris Isitt, who is the chairman of the Chelsea Pitch Owners. So it's a really good opportunity to speak to the guy who runs the Chelsea Pitch Owners about what's going on, stadium redevelopment-wise, where the CPO are at with it, where are the CPO at in life generally, and that kind of thing. Now, if you have uh, you have to get a ticket, you don't they don't charge you for a ticket, but you have to get a ticket because they're holding it at uh, under the bridge at 6.30 tomorrow evening. So uh, no ticky, no entry. So uh, if you want to get a ticket, just go to chelseasupporterstrust.com and uh, you'll find out how to get a ticket for the SGM and then you can go along and it'll be very worthwhile, I guarantee you. I'm going. So, are you now? 
Yeah. I might not be controversially. I uh, know. What? Well, I was, I was, I was, no, well, I was supposed to be going to see Misty and Roots live in Camden. Live, live. Uh, but uh, even though they're in their eighties, so they're not they're not very alive. But um, they've they've cancelled it for circumstances beyond their control. I think they must have run out of ganja, or something. But I don't know. Anyway, so I, I'm not. So, but I do have my nephew in tow. So that that complicates ah. things. Uh, yeah, he's he's sitting up in gate seventeen with me tomorrow. How lovely is that? Mm, great. So I don't know. I'll, I'll, if it, 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 I might do. It depends. I'm not making any promises, but I, I think it might be too good to miss. So I, I shall probably go. Anyway, enough of all of that. If you want to go, get yourself a ticket. I've just told you where, so don't ask me again. Right. Uh, after this very short break, uh, we will be uh, returning for more of the same. Quite actually, we'll be returning to talk about the Chelsea Burnley match on Saturday, of course. Fans, real I'm Jason Cundy, and you're listening to the Chelsea Football Fancast. Up the Chelsea Football Fancast. Welcome back. This is the Chelsea Fancast, and I am, of course, Stamford Chidge, and I am joined by the delightful Jonathan Kidd. Hey, up, Chidge. Hi, lad. Hey, Aye. Icky thump. Icky thump. Aye, aye. aye. Got, me, got me whip it out. Aye. Eccles cakes. Aye. Uh, aye. And uh, a man who I know loves an Eccles cake or three, uh, the lovely Martin Wickham. Never at one in my life. But you see, I just you knew you were going to say that. <laughs> you know, I mean, you weren't you weren't with me, were you, when we went up to Burnley? Uh, no, I, in... no, I missed it. Oh, I believe I gave you my ticket, didn't I? Or you, was I it... think actually, no, no, I think <laughs> I got it. I got it through Neil or Dom. I'm not sure which. Anyway. Yeah. What you what you uh, what you won't know is that on the way back I went on a, a a huge search for a genuine Eccles cake to bring back from Burnley because I like an Eccles cake and uh, I eventually found a spa that was near the pub car park where we all parked uh, and found that they were selling Eccles cakes the same Eccles cakes that I can buy in my local supermarket so I was not very happy. I just, journey, you, mean, then, was it? you mean you mean spa as in S P A R rather yeah. than S P A, which is yes. the kind of thing you have in Winchester where you can go and luxuriate. It's not yes. that kind of spa. Yeah. Yes. I just thought I'd clear that clear that up for anybody not understanding. Okay. Thank you very much for translating, J.K. What would I do without you? Yes, it was a supermarket. Uh, so there we go. So I I didn't have to travel all the way up to Burnley to get genuine Eccles cakes. Uh, I could uh, you know because they didn't have any genuine ones. I was very upset. I thought I'd get like huge ones up there, you know, but. Sadly not. Anyway, um, Weirdly, like, there was a genuine Eccles cake seller just outside the ground, and I got a couple. Really? You yeah. didn't tell me that when I bumped into you, but then again, I didn't ask you. No, why would I suddenly come up with that thought? Well, that's the kind of thing I would do. I would have been so excited about it. I said, I would have said, JK, JK, guess what I found? I found a genuine Eccles cake salesperson outside of the ground. So I, I should have said, it's, 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 guess what I've just found? Wow, genuine Eccles cake seller. What, 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 while spitting crumbs at him. In the, yeah, 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 while eating one. Look what I'm eating. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's it's bad, and I'd... Brought, bought them to take home to my daughter so that I wasn't going to be eating them. So Definitely uh, would have been, uh, yeah, you'd have been, been, been like being in a snowstorm. But there we go. Right, we all know where we, where we start with the Chelsea versus Burnley preview. We start with Chidge's team selection. Ooh, 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 ooh. And here he is, JK. Oh, Chidge. Oh. King of beauty. Chidge of creamy jeans, Chidge. I know, wow. right. Okay, this is my thinking. Um, Don't do that. I know. Well, I know Chiloba's definitely out, um, and we we think that there's a doubt with Chilwell. I'm I'm going with the fact that Chilwell will be okay, but if not, we know it'll be Cucurella. So I'm going Chilwell, Badiashiel, uh, Petrovic, Dizazi, Gusto. Um, I think Enzo won't make the cut because I think Enzo will be a little tired from his trip from South America. So he'll be asleep in his cot somewhere, uh, which means that Gallagher will partner Caicedo uh, in the two in midfield, uh, which makes this very similar to the team that started against Leicester. So I, I hope that Mudrick kind of plays in this number 10 role, not least, well, because I think he's better there for a start. Scored a good goal for Ukraine, didn't he, from a 
central position. Right. Qualified um, them for the Euros. You'd be he, flying. Gone yeah, the qualified them for the Euros. It also enables Palmer to play on the right, Sterling. I, because, I, I mean, I've got Sterling on the left. We all know what we all think about Sterling. But, you know, this is Burnley. He scored a couple against them, I think, didn't he? Or he played really well against them up there. So it, it's, you know, his kind of level, really, isn't it? He got so, locked for the penalty. He got yeah thrushed to the ground. He was excellent against them up there. One of his better. He was. So I, I think he probably will be again uh, on Saturday. So Sterling starts, Palmer on the right, Jackson in the middle, because that's what Poch tends to do. I mean, I, I, I as you know, I, I would much rather have Jackson uh, on the left, but uh, I don't know who we put in the middle. I mean, you can play Palmer there, but he's no number nine. I mean, I think the reality is, is that with those kind of, uh, you know, one slash three up front, you expect them to be really fluid and to be moving across the pitch all over the place. And we certainly saw them do that against Leicester. So I, I don't think they'll be doing anything different against Burnley. So I, I mean, like Chuck Womack has re-injured himself as well. So that removes another option. So well, anyway, you know, for, for everyone sighing about Sterling being on the team sheet, unfortunately, until the other options are back, what else can we do? Because... I agree. I'd certainly have Chukwemeka and Kunku in his place, but if they're not available, we can't. There's not much you can do about it. Well, I I, I think that Mad- uh, Madueki is the natural replacement for Sterling, and uh, you know he, he scored a cracking goal against Leicester, didn't he? And uh, yeah, I actually like him. I gotta I, say, I like Madueki. He goes forward and he has a crack. I, that's you know, it's good enough for me. I know there are plenty of downsides in his game, but you know that that he'll do for me, Martin. Um. Yeah, I've been a little bit more impressed by Carney when he's played, but again, it's been when he's played. It seems like he every time he scores a goal, he gets injured, which is a bit of a worry. Well, I mean, this whole injury thing is is a massive worry, isn't it, J.K.? I mean, it, it was the main focus for the uh, the presser earlier, wasn't it? Understandably, um, precipitated by the news that Lavi is out for the season, having played thirty five minutes in one game. I, I actually now will be able to tell my great-grandchildren that I was there for the 35 minutes that Lavia played in the season 23-24. Um, like I just... like, feel like when Pato played on loan yeah. for us. And yeah, he, yeah. He, he was on, I think he was signed in August, didn't turn up till April. And when he finally made his debut, it was away at Villa Park, I believe. And the first thing that got sung was, we forgot that you were here. <laughs> so... Um, uh, I, I've just had a brilliant. This is without doubt the uh, the question of the day or the comment of the day so far from Sherry. I like an Eccles cake, but dare I say I prefer a Chorley cake. I hope this doesn't significantly affect the Burnley lineup. <laughs> you see that Sh- Sherry? That is my kind of question. And J.K.'s by the sound of his laughing in the background. Well, I don't know. I don't think I've ever had a Chorley cake. I'm, I'm actually quite intrigued. You have to, uh, Cherry, let me know what a Chorley cake is. It sounds intriguing. Um, yeah, may I just say how fantastic it is to, is to see Sherry is listening to the uh, to the podcast. Oh, you know Sherry? I do very well. Oh, there we're, not, we're not not very well, but well, very well. That's I attend, lovely. attended her birthday party recently. Oh, there we go. There we go. Well, nice to have you uh, joining us tonight, Sherry, as well. So, um, yeah, this whole injury thing. I mean, you know, funny enough, as I said, it is rather serendipitous. I did ping an article about it, which um, was along the lines of, you know, this is not just a Chelsea problem. I mean, if you, I look down the list and um, we're about average at the moment, although I suspect that average has gone up because of the latest injury issues we've had this week. But uh, we were about mid-table in terms of injuries, although we were right at the top for most of the season. Liverpool have got more than us. Uh, somebody... Luton have got 12 hour engine at the moment. Um, but it's it seems New to be Carl fairly have had heaps of them as well. Yeah, they're they're in double figures, I think. But I mean, it seems to be fairly universal. And we've talked about it on the show before. Is it the boots? Is it the pitches? You know, have they got this synthetic stuff in the pitches which you know catches people's ankles and knees and causes ligament damage? Is it that is it that they're training too hard? Is it that they're not fit enough anyway? Is it too many games? Nobody seems to know the answer. I think it was a bit of a shame, JK, that uh, you know, when Lavia got injured and perhaps an indictment of, of where we are at the moment uh, psychologically with the club, but everybody went, well, it's the bloody Pochettino, it's the bloody club, you know, the bloody medical department. Everybody was very quick to, to blame well, that. But he, he actually made a little reference to that. I didn't mention it saying, Did he? You know, yeah, he said, it's, it's not, he said, don't try and say it's my fault. He said and laughed. 
because obviously the, the, there's a that's been one of the arguments against him as a manager is that that somehow their training sessions have caused the injuries but i i i agree Chidge. i think it's a lot to do with the uh um the pace of the game and the fact if you look at everybody playing it'd be interesting to see which players haven't been injured that yeah. would be the interesting thing to look at and gallagher yeah. hasn't been injured casado seems to be casado similarly Seems I, to be very competent, I, at, despite all the the kicking he gets and the the physical activity he hasn't been. Who else hasn't been injured? Well, I can. If you wait for one, one minute, I can tell you because I actually put this in me article, uh, which I'm now desperately trying to find, and have done so. And I I wrote this list down. Actually, here we go. Um, right, Liverpool have got twelve out. Oh no, sorry. Luton have got 12 out. Liverpool, 11. Brentford, Man U, Newcastle, Sheffield United have got eight. Uh, Palace, seven. Villa, Burnley, Chelsea, six. This was at the time of writing. Ours has gone up again. Bournemouth, Arsenal, Brighton, Forest, and Wolves, five. Spurs, four. West Ham, Everton, three. City, two. Fulham are the only one with a fully, completely and utterly fit uh, squad. Right. It's oh. also City of the, the huge competitors have only had two. Yep. So is there, are they doing something different? Are they... Is it? Yeah, it's it's so well, difficult. They had, they had De Bruyne out for most of the first half of the season, yeah. and, and he's now back to be fit. Yeah. And Haaland was out. Yes, true. And they've also had pretty much had two world class players in every position. No. So if they did have an injury, it didn't have that as much of a detrimental effect. Now, and never we, ever we, we've hardly got a single world class player in any position, let, let alone two. So no, yeah. never ever let it be said that I never do any homework for the articles that I write for uh, CFC UK. I did some homework. I consulted the mighty transfer Mecht, which has an excellent se uh, section on injuries. Now, of the forty-one games this season, Premier League, League Cup, and FA Cup, this is the list of games missed for our players. Fafana, forty-one. Lavia, 32. Chaloba, 31. James, 30. Nkunku, 29. Chukwameka, 27. Badiashil, 18. Chilwell, 18. Kukurella, 18. Sanchez, 14. Colwell, 7. Madueki, 5. Silver, 4. Mudrick, 4. Gusto, 2. Caicedo, 2. Uguchukwu, 23. Fernandez, 2. The only members of the first team squad who have missed no games through injury are Petrovic, Dizazi, Gilchrist, Gallagher, Palmer, Sterling and Jackson. So there's your answer. Is it because Sterling doesn't try hard enough? Um, I, I couldn't possibly unfair. comment. <laughs> I couldn't and won't comment. Um, it's interesting, isn't it, that Frank, when Frank was at his best, uh, uh, he had he a... broke the record, didn't he? He broke the record, yeah, yeah. And uh, so is there something about their being at their, I don't know, physical peak or what? It's a very, it's... it's it... are, are these are these players saying they're injured or are they being told? No, like injured? Robin used to like not be injured when he was injured. Yeah, I, I don't know how much of it is someone looking at, a, you know, values on a, a GPS and going, oh, those numbers are a bit low. There must be something wrong. And, you know, out of an abundance of caution, with cer certainly with certain players, they hold them back i mean La i remember when i checked this earlier in the week when i saw that lavia had been completely written off for the season when he got in he came on against palace got hurt and they said bruised thigh yeah now somewhere between then and now as that has gone from a bruised thigh to something that has knocked him out for the entire season now Mad. is that over training trying to recover is that too much joe cole done an interview i think with um john obi and he said they're doing too much work in the gym. They're overtraining yeah. in some cases. I remember me and you discussing in the pub, Reese James is top heavy. Yeah. And he's too muscular on top and he's having problems with well, his that was, knees. And that's, what, yeah, that's what did for Essien, isn't it? Yeah, he, he got too, injured. Too, too heavy and he buggered his knees up as a result. And yeah. he only recovered a little bit towards the end, but he'd lost the best years of his career as a result. So, yeah, I mean... I mean, I joked about it on social media. I posted a, a picture of Dr. Nick from The Simpsons as, as our head of medical. You know, it's it's laughable. And we know about it because it's our club. It's the club we support. We're more aware of the sheer number of injuries. And I'd imagine of you've gone through the numbers for every other team. I'd imagine it's the same. But we somehow, off the money that's been spent, that we don't have the strength in depth to cover these is slightly criminal.
in my view. But mm. it's it's very strange, and I'm, I'm sure they're, they're not getting injured on purpose. We know that, but I mean, fucking hell. The other thing was with Lavia. He as, he was as an 18 year year old at Southampton. He was um he 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 was almost overplayed, wasn't he? He like had like 2,500 minutes played last season for Southampton, and then he gets signed, moves to Chelsea, and just seems to break down. No, he, that... he was already injured though, Martin, wasn't he? Yeah, he... but he. No, but he he joined. Yeah, he joined, possibly overplayed like the previous season, and yeah, yeah, yeah. he's now suffering. I, 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 you know, there seems to be a lot of, you know, people claiming to be experts working in football who are winging it, and I think we're finding out because I, I, I saw all the moaning during the international break. Um, pundits who have spent weeks and months bemoaning the amount of injuries, the amount of fixture congestion, the amount of games players are playing. And then when they didn't, maybe didn't give the full effort for international friendlies, lost their minds over it. You can't have it both ways. You cannot have it both ways. There is a breaking point for these players. We're reaching it. We've already discussed, you know, the turf, there's a synthetic layer underneath. There's less giving pitches now because it needs to look aesthetically pleasing for TV. But it's it's merciless on players' hamstrings and muscles. It's causing them more injuries. Well, there, there was that other thing, wasn't there? Kicking. I mean, these are really rumours, so you know we shouldn't really be giving them too much credence. But they were saying that there was pressure uh, from the sporting directors and the owners to get them, you know, back on the pitch. You know, which Is this I think Chelsea or other clubs. Yeah, yeah, Chelsea. But I think that was possibly just an excuse to have a pop at the owners again. I, I don't see that. I think that I think I think they've almost gone the other way and been overcautious, and they've shut yeah. down players at risk of who are at higher risk of getting re-injured. I think. Well, I mean, we don't know, but I'd like to think that was the case in a sense. But the other thing was they were saying that the the gym work that they're doing. I, I remember seeing something on Twitter, a guy who was. You know, quite a uh, I would I'm knowledgeable slash expert in the field, but he was saying that they were they were doing a lot of these weights exercises all wrong, and actually they were probably going to do themselves more harm than good by doing it. So maybe there's something in that. that the reality crux, is that was the crux of what Joe Cole said. Yeah, I mean the reality is we don't know. None of us are experts. None of us uh, are behind the scenes there to really know what's going on. But as I said, my suspicions are that this is not just a Chelsea issue. We've been particularly badly affected. I'll grant you, but. This is this is seems to be universal in football at the moment. I can't for the life of me either, guys, say, oh, well, it's because they're playing too many games. Because, JK, when you and I were young, a successful side would play 65, 70 games every season with much smaller squads. And and the, the, the injuries were only some kind of dreadful, you know, um, b- leg broken. Well, the, the pitches were worse. They were yeah. like mud baths. So well, that would be more yeah. sapping. Well, you want, yeah, it was sapping injury wise, but yeah, sorry, um, uh, energy wise. But you wonder whether the fact that the ground gave so much more, Maybe. whether that was that was beneficial to them, and also yeah. the the level of of athleticism was nowhere near as well. Yeah, but they could drink more pints after a game. Hey, indeed, and and yes, if they, and yeah, before, yeah. in fact, yeah, and and during, if it was anything like my uh, Sunday league side, yeah, and mine too. We used to walk onto the pitch at half time with a bottle of beer and a fag. Yeah, exactly. And then get thumped 27-0. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so there we go. So no, I'm you're afraid... up playing under 13s, mate. <laughs> well, uh, we were under 13 at the time, mate. Yeah. Um, yes. Uh, I, I don't think we have an answer for this. I hate to disappoint you all, people, but I'm afraid we do not have an answer at all. Uh, but it, it's clearly very frustrating. I'll tell you what we should say, actually. I feel desperate for Lavia, actually. Can you imagine coming into a new club, being quite a youngster, and it to end up like this. In fact, actually, that this was kind of. I mean, the the, the thing I was I was going to call my article for CFC UK was actually going to be called "No More Heroes Anymore," but I've I've already done one called that, so I had to change it. I was about to say you've already used that one. I have, uh, but the point being is that I think it's very sad for us too because if people are getting injured as regularly as as they seem to be these days and long term and possibly career ending, I mean we're not going to have any heroes anymore because what you want ideally is to see a a player either come through the academy and play most of his career at the club or buy somebody who's fantastic and watch them have most of their career at the club, you know, where they don't get injured out of the game. They spend, you know, five to 10 years at a club, do brilliantly, become a legend, become a hero. You know, Rhys James could have been a fantastic legend for this club, but will he ever be the same player again? Who knows? 
Ben Chilwell. He hasn't looked the same player since he came back from injury. He could have been a legend at this club. And then there are probably a lot of others that, that we've got at the moment that we will never know. And Indeed. I just think it's sad for supporters that we won't Indeed. get to see these players de- develop and become legends. Eden Hazard retiring at 33 is a case in point. Yeah, and I mean, to be selfish about it, at least we saw the best of him. Indeed, but he he just said, nah, see, I can't, I can't do this anymore. I think you'll get that in. You might, that's what may happen. You will get players retiring sooner. Like you say, yeah. no more heroes. You don't have players, you know, dropping down the leagues. They just said, well, I can't take it anymore. I'm done. And packing the game in much sooner. Similar similar to what you've had in American football when they became more aware of the concussion risk and they started packing in much sooner. The, yeah, I'm just about to comment on that one. The uh, the uh, Loftus-Cheek and Pulisic not injured for Milan, but you have to uh, appreciate that the standard and level is nowhere near the Premier League at all. Nowhere I'd, near. I'd be a bit more charitable. I'd say the game's a bit more tactical and considered, and it's to help them. And I'm pretty sure I've seen Pulisic has been um, ruled out a few times. And Loftus-Cheek, it wasn't he was constantly injured. He just got one really, 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 really bad injury and it completely yeah. fucked him. And he got that in a bloody friendly on a shit pitch. On an artificial pitch. Happen to at least yeah. three of them this summer. Yeah, they've got yeah, them because in the they're... summer, haven't they? Exactly, yeah. on artificial, t- artificial. They're playing, Yeah, they're playing at um, Notre Dame, so which is an artificial pitch. So, you know, what could possibly go fucking wrong? Indeed. Right. Um, time to move on, I feel. Um, now, obviously... Did last you haven't time... actually asked me about the team at all. Haven't I? Okay, no. right. Okay, no, ready? One, two, three. You, you asked Martin, and I just... Uh, oh, sorry, I, JK. I was, given, no, I, no, I, no, I was pushed no. into the background there. No, 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 and, and Martin was very, very no, competent no, no. and spoke well about it, but I've had no opportunity what is it? to say anything. So... Cry more. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I've put it up on screen for you. What more oh, do you want? You're a, well, no, it wasn't a question of putting up. I was getting a word in edgeways, Chidge. Actually, thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, he will play Sterling. I agree. Uh, Jackson in your position there rarely plays in that position. He comes in from either wing. Um, uh, Palmer, if he's on the right wing, isn't as uh, productive, though his touches are sublime. Um, uh, uh, he should play Mudrick. Will he, will he play Medweke? Um, who knows? Uh, but yeah, but I don't think Enzo's going to get on. Uh, and I don't think he'll play Chilwell. He'll play Cucurella because... Um, what he said at the press conference today was that he hadn't tried him and uh, and he, he'd got a dead leg and they the, the chances were he'll be a sub. So, uh, yes, Gusto, and it would be bad as and Dissazi. And, um, and Gusto, let's hope he plays because he's been fantastic the last yeah, few yeah. games. And we've only, and in, in eight games, we've only lost once and that was in the, um, uh, in, at Wembley against mm. Liverpool. So, you know, but as always, Chidge, who knows, who knows what is going to happen? We can't say. We have no idea. Thank you. Right. That's okay. Enough. My apologies. I'll okay. do better next I'm time. Getting, I'm getting used to it, Chidge. I'm getting oh, used oh, to it. Oh, oh, that hurts. That hurts. Uh, right. I'm okay. Some bills for no apparent reason whatsoever. No. Oh, okay. Yes, okay. <laughs> enough. Enough. Uh, right. Listen. Um, last time we were we at the bridge, it all got a bit. Uh, I mean, I think toxic is too strong a word. I've been at the ground where it's really been toxic. I don't think this was that toxic. But uh, we did get a you don't know what you're doing. Uh, Sterling got a lot of booing, which was very unseemly, really. But, I mean, I wouldn't tell anybody what to do at a football ground. It's up to them. But uh, I choose not to boo. Um, I choose to say nothing. Um, But, yeah, it was rum- there were a lot of rumblings going on. There's no doubt about it. And... Um, very shortly afterwards, uh, the Chelsea Supporters Trust, either JK's turned into D- uh, Diego Costa. No, it's really JK. Yeah, shortly afterwards, the Supporters Trust uh, got in touch with the club because, you know, they, they, they know that they, they're, they're a good uh, barometer of, of supporter feeling, it being that they represent supporters. And they sent uh, a letter to the ownership to say, look, you know, I mean, really, I mean, this is the reason I'm bringing this up, because I think that this this entire statement has been deliberately misinterpreted and misrepresented and misunderstood by people in the media, predominantly, and fans who want to believe one thing and also owners who want to believe one thing. But really, the tenant of the of, of the statement was that, guys, you know, there's a pretty toxic act, atmosphere brewing amongst the support here. It would be a really good idea if you actually communicated to the wider supporter base rather than just the FAB, the fans forum and the supporter groups, what your plans are, what you think of it all, what you're going to do going forward. Because supporters 
are being basically, if you've ever heard the old expression, we're all in the mushroom shed. So we're being fed shit and kept in the dark. And that's how a lot of people feel. So they were, I think, entirely reasonable to be able to say, look, guys, we're happy to work with you to think about how you can communicate what your plans are for this football club because people are not happy. Of course, that got, I mean, there was a, a few kind of fairly uh, dramatic phrases in the in the statement, of course, and that's what got picked up on. And it was all like supporters trust are bashing the club and being disloyal and la 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 la. And then you get the football uh, fan advisory board or FAB, Virgil. FAB. FAB weighing in, um, saying we don't recognize this, which I've got to say is nonsense. <laughs> so I'm sorry, but it is. And actually, all the things that the FAB complained about, the trust statement acknowledged that they were doing and applauding. I mean, this is the thing. The trust will call it as it sees it. You know, it will applaud the club for things that the club does well, and it will kick it for the things that it doesn't do, think does very well. So we actually, they actually acknowledge that uh, people like Danny Finkelstein is very heavily, um, he's very heavily uh, invested in fan engagement, as were the ownership when we were dealing with them before the takeover. They were all very keen to see this happen. This is why the FAB was created. We know Danny does a great job and tries his hardest. But it wasn't. It, the point was, it, it needs to be more than Danny. It needs to be the whole board, and we need to hear from them. We need to hear them speak. We need we need to hear what their plans are. So the FAB got that wrong totally, in my 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 uh, my view. I think basically the owners and and the FAB are incredibly thin skinned, frankly. So this is where we are. Uh, this is my two pennants worth. What say it, you boys? It, it smacked of. Uh, an attempt to set supporters against the uh, supporters' trust. I'm afraid, via their statement, I, I, I thought it was awful. Well, that backfired somewhat, didn't it? Yeah. Well, no. It's in some instances you get some idiots on social media are now questioning the uh, the supporters' trust, which uh, uh, if it succeeded to that extent, you've got a lot of people. Uh, and well, I suppose from a positive point of view, you you've got some people who weren't aware of the fact are now aware of the supporters' trust and the the FAB at the same time. But uh, I I thought it was it was calculated by the club actually to um to create division. That was the impression I got from it. Uh, if people don't actually look at what both statements were, they're just making assumptions. They were I found them being uh, I found it very divisive. Well, I mean, obviously, I'm very close to this because I'm on the board of the Sports Trust and I do know a lot of things that I, you know, as I, as Jose Mourinho once said, if I speak, I'm in trouble. I so really I, prefer not to speak. I have to, I have to be very careful with what I say. But um, <clears throat> I think just my view on what happened as a consequence was that actually, you know, I think there was there were inevitably some people who thought the statement by the Trust was too strong and were not happy with the Trust. I thought most people were happy. And then when the FAB made their statement, people stopped being unhappy with the trust and were pretty much four square behind the trust and very unhappy with the FAB. That's just my view, you know. Um, you know, I mean, other people are entitled to their own. You know, I mean, the thing, I mean, Neil's point here, which is a really good point, actually. Uh, right, there you go. I think the, the CST should have made the statement prior to cover. Yeah, I, I, hear, I hear what you say, Neil. I mean, the point is, is that, you know, the trust is... Yeah, that's a fairly that's a fairly good point. I mean, you know, our feeling is is that if we don't feel we're getting listened to or heard, um, then uh, um, you know we we feel that we we need to make it more public because that's the only way we can gain, you know, a response usually. And I mean, it worked. <laughs> well, it did work, didn't it? I mean, we also are responsible to our membership. We could have just sent it to them, I suppose. That would have been one way of doing it, but. We, you know, we felt something needed to change. I mean, the reality is, Neil, is that the supporters just want to work with the club. We want to work with them to make things better. We're, I mean, there's a brilliant article written by the score, would you believe, in Simon Phillips's kind of thing that he does. Um, so I'm afraid it's behind a paywall, but it's, I'm going to try and encourage Simon to, to, to publish it more widely because it's a brilliant piece of writing. But it basically underlines what most of us think, which is actually we all love this club. We all want it. We want it to do well. We want it to go in the same direction. Um, and, uh, you know, the way to do it is to talk to each other and work with each other, not to invest in silly, childish games. But I do take your point, Neil. It's a good one. Um, but there you go. We are where we are. Sorry to interrupt. I mean, I kind I on the one hand I do agree with what Neil's saying about it keeping it private and confidential, but on the other hand, the response from Eurosec might as well have been written by a fucking chat GPT generator. It was so lacking in any it was 
generated by AI. And it was so poor, tone deaf and um, and lacking in any type of um, sympathy with what they were saying that I almost think it was the trust duty to publicise it a bit more widely. I generally agree with the trust views on the ownership. My, dif my disagreement would be an approach. I would have gone a lot more aggressive sooner but that you know my of my views on the ownership are are what they are i understand why they would need to build a bridge i personally think that you know they need to be met halfway and thus far there's been no real effort to um to do that and the point they were making which everyone seemed to miss and which i think is valid because they're not speaking in public they seem to be communicating via rumor in the absence of anything concrete, you just get a load of bullshit and you get, you know, secondhand briefings to favour journalists about what they're doing, the stuff about it, how it's commercially deficient, the bullshit with the sponsorship, which was just amateur hour. And, you know, I get shit on social media because I question it. And I look at these people replying to me and thinking, if you want to stick your head in the sand, you do so. I will criticize them and i will continue to do so and that is that is me as that is me as someone who has a bit more than a bit more than the on pitch um outcomes at chelsea at hand i think financially there are all sorts of fucking bombs due to go off mm. i can't see how they've not violated profits well, and sustainability oh, 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 oh yeah but we this is the problem martin isn't it we're living in 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 the mushroom shed because we don't know. So when you don't know, you fill in the vacuum. And well, that's ex and... That, exactly that's what's happened. You just you just <laughs> yeah. crystallised it. There. But in the in the absence of anything, uh, stuff's been put in there to fill the vacuum. So a guy who, who was involved in I can't remember the guy's name, but he's on Talk Sport a lot, and he just says every club's fucked on PSR, and he's able to get away with saying on you know Chelsea could get thrown out of the Premier Stuart League. Somebody I can't I, I can't remember the the guy's name, mm. but he he's able to say there's a risk of them getting thrown out of the league. And because nothing's been said back, something has to, it feels airtime. So mm. then they're, they're not helping themselves and they are, yeah, they are, you know, I don't find it a surprise that an ownership that was installed by Rishi Sunak has the same characteristics as Rishi Sunak, i.e. Well, being as tetchy as fuck every time they're given even the mildest of criticism. Yeah, I, I think they're very thin skin. I mean, it, it amazes me because actually on two counts, one is that actually their, their strategy is, is exactly the same as the previous ownership who used to brief selected journalists and communicate with the supporters all the time by doing that. And it was all and a load of bullshit. This time they've just used different journalists. And Matt Law's well, got his knickers in a twist. Exactly that. You know, all we're saying is talk to us. If, if you are, if you run a PLC company, it is enshrined in company law that you have a shareholders meeting. And then the board of directors have to be accountable to the shareholders and talk to them. Now, okay, we're not a PLC and we are not technically shareholders, but, we might as well be. I mean, you know, we spend an awful lot of money at this club. We're hugely emotionally invested in it. The least they could do is talk to us in, in an organized platform forum, face to face, mano a mano. They need, we know, talk to us. Tell us, it's all we're asking. Talk to us. Tell us what you're planning. We want it to go well. None of us want this club to go down the shitter. None of this want this club to, to play, you know, to be performing badly on the pitch. We want the club to be successful. We want the same thing. But you're the ones that can make it happen. So tell us how you're going to. That's all the that's all the trust we're saying, really. And I think most supporters would agree with that, would they not, J.K.? I mean, is that not unreasonable? Of course, that's exactly what you you would hope would happen. But that they don't need to say anything, do they? They so, don't have to say anything. Yeah, they don't. Yeah, well, same, same thing. thing. Yeah, same thing. Yeah, I think yeah. it's so, in their interest now to do so. Yeah, because... completely. But I, I, I'm, I'm badgering. Perhaps they thought this was it. You know, they they put out um, a, a complaint from from. Do they you have to sign an NDA for anything to come out from the F? Well, F I mean, okay, just just to tell you about the FAB, how ridiculous yeah. it is. I mean, you've got. Yeah. You've got people who were elected on there. You've got people who are a legacy from the previous incarnation, which was actually started under the previous ownership. You've got people on there who are, they've got a fans forum representative. So he's on there because he was on the fans forum. Don't get me started on the fans forum. You've got Tracy Brown on there because she's the diversity uh, representative. So you've got people who re represent various groups. Neil Beard is supposed to represent the supporter groups, including the supporters trust. So you've got a mixed match of people on there. 
but yeah, they're all. I mean, and they're supposed to operate effectively, almost like a shadow board. So they 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 are they are there to help the club uh, make decisions that affect supporters effectively. They don't have anything to do with on on pitch matters. And of course, you know, one one delegates that to the club. Of course, one does. But they are. You're right. They're they're subject to NDAs, and they can't fucking sell anybody anything. So that makes them completely, therefore, unrepresentative, Absolutely doesn't it? Absolutely unrepresentative. Absolutely. It's it's a, it's, it's, it's just it's a complete a sham. Stupid, complete sham, and it's it's ridiculous. Absolutely right. It's yeah. ridiculous. You know. I mean, one thing uh, you know, and I, I will say this as somebody who's been on the Sports Trust from its inception, is that we have always religiously been uh, uh, very, 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 you know, very strong on the fact that we are there to represent our members. And I can tell you, I won't tell you what they are, but I can remember many times when I was chairman and when I've been on the board that the membership have wanted us to go one way in a way that I have completely and utterly disagree with personally, but it's my responsibility and duty to go the way the membership wants it. That's called representative democracy. And that's the point of the trust. So there you go. Right, before I bore everybody stupid and they all go and watch No, London, we haven't been London boring. Is, well, okay. No, no. All right, uh, should we talk about the football again? Yes. No, no, no. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. I, I, don't want to, I, I don't want to depress myself. Can we talk about the board CST again? <laughs> no, I think we've done it. I think we did a good... We, we did We did what we had yeah. to do. We would have, been, would, have been, would have been remiss of us not to have talked about it. Uh, well, there, 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 there would have been an elephant on the screen to represent it being in the room if we hadn't. Indeed, indeed. Now, uh... Here we go. We got Burnley on Saturday. Uh, as always, we have no idea what what Chelsea will turn up. I have to say, what worries me most is the fact that they've just had this international break, and I don't know why. But in my head, when they come back from an international break, they're just not on it. We know that half of them would have trundled back sometime late this week, so they probably wouldn't have had as much training as normal. And they're playing Burnley, who they should spank without even thinking about it, which will mean, immediately mean they won't be on it when it kicks off. Um. I mean, Burnley are, are, are abject, as poor old Adam was, was you know, kind of uh, alluding to earlier on. And they've been abject in the Premier League when they've played us in the past. In fact, they've only got that one uh, victory back in 2017, which kind of ruined Conte's uh, season, didn't it, if you think about it, the 3-2. Uh, and other than that, in the Premier League, they've drawn once with us at home. Well, they've drawn, they've drawn, tw- no, drawn three times, 2-2, 1-1 and 1-1. Otherwise, we've beat them all the time. So, you know, this should be a game that we should win. But it depends what team turns up, doesn't it, JK? Well, it also depends whether there are some, you know, we could be playing very well and they'll just have a couple of glaring errors, you know, like this this Azi will uh, will bang a 40-yard back pass into the corner of the goal, possibly one of the, the best... Uh, uh, best own goals ever seen at the bridge. Um, or... Uh, um, the month contender. Uh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely right. I'm happy with one of the best goals scored by any Chelsea player this season, uh, yeah. really. Thank God for Madweco. <laughs> um, uh, so, um, or even, um, I mean, luckily Sanchez is injured. I mean, and once again, that I don't know how he did that because he hasn't been playing. Must be another training ground injury. Well, so, he's done a David Best and like dropped a jar of mayonnaise on his foot. Okay, I admit it. It, it was me. Like I threw a jar oh, yeah, of mayonnaise at him. Okay. And of course, oh, he right. dropped it. You uh, know. Uh, cool. He said he did. You didn't shout catch in time. Um, so, uh, uh, and, and also if, I mean, let's hope that if there is a penalty that, that Palmer takes it, let's not hope that Sterling attempts to grabs it and let's hope that Palmer takes the free kick and let's hope that Gallagher doesn't play as badly as he played for England during the week. Oh, my goodness me. Was he playing deeper for England? <laughs> he wasn't playing number 10, was he? No, he wasn't because that's Foden. Foden. Well, that's that's they've got other players for there. He was out of position, yeah, but whatever it was, yeah, yeah. I was bemused that he just kept playing. You know, the game went on. He's still there. Um, uh, but yeah, no, I, I, I we're not going to see a repeat of that one. Hopes, but uh, would this, the, will the midfield work if Mudrick's playing in the middle there? Well, let's hope it does. Let's hope Mudrick scores a, a worldie. Let's hope that he's uh, he's influenced by his his showing for for the Ukraine during the week. But, but all of these things, we, we we can never say for sure, but they have, haven't have been beaten in eight games other than the, the League Cup final. So, um, you know, I, I think we'll probably, we'll probably grab a draw from the, uh, the, uh, the jaws of victory. Um, but yeah, who knows? Once again, Chidge, who knows? It's, it's just, well, you know, 
it, what, what on earth is going to happen? It's a glaring error or a terrible defensive error. Or and we've got Badia Shield coming back, who's not known for his uh, um, his lack of. He, lack he always, he's got a gaff in him, hasn't he? Every one, game, one a game, one a game, one yeah. huge one a game. So, you know, um, just to cheer us all up a little bit, uh, Chelsea have uh, actually they're only lost four times at home this season. Um, Two of those matches, and I mean, actually, I think we're on a. a I think there is an upturn in our form. I think we, we we are generally, you know, playing a little bit better than we were at the beginning of the season. We lost the, we lost against Forest in September and Villa in September, both one nil. And we all remember we should have won both of those games. We were the better side. We were horrible against Brentford when we lost two nil. We got mugged totally, didn't we? Twenty eighth of October, and of course, the worst of all was that four two. Uh, defeat against Wolves in February when we were absolutely woeful. That was sh one of the worst performances I've seen for I a long time. These are home games you're talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about yeah. home games. But All since right. since the Wolves defeat, we've only lost once, and that was in the League Cup final against Liverpool. But we've we've beaten Villa away handsomely, Palace away handsomely. We drew against City away. Uh, we beat Leeds, arguably a bit luckily in the cup. We uh, drew against Brentford away. Uh, that was an awful performance, has to be said. We beat Newcastle at home 3-2 and we beat Leicester in the Cup. So, I mean, the home form has looked a lot better recently, it has to be said. Uh, nevertheless, we are on 11th. Um, I mean, the thing is, you know, I looked at the table uh, yesterday before I did that Burnley uh, show, the No Now You Never podcast. We're 11th on 39 points, OK? But we've got two games in hand on West Ham, who are in 7th. OK, and they're on 44 points. So we're five points behind West Ham in seventh with two games in hand. I still think if they can get some bloody consistency, you know, if they can get some consistency, I still think we can finish seventh, you know. I really do. So they have two uh, games in hand are Spurs and Arsenal. So that's that or, maybe yeah. not bankers, but um, on the league form, yeah, it, it's really so we've already scored more goals in the league this season than we did all the last. Yeah. The only problem is we've only conceded two goals less. Yeah. And <clears throat> I mean, if you look at the, you know, the wins at home recently, we've conceded two goals every, in our last four games. Yeah. And we're yep. undefeated in all four, which is just yep. insane. So yeah. we are scoring, which was the problem we had last season. We couldn't score. However, our defending has been atrocious. I don't think we haven't kept a clean sheet since late January against yeah. Villa in the cup. Yeah. And for any side aspiring to climb the table, and we certainly have the capability to do so, unless we sort that defence out, we need that's not going to happen because eventually, you know, we're not going to score. Th you know, we we cannot be in a position where we need to score three in a game just to guarantee a one goal win. That's no, I mean, not, that is not sustainable. I totally agree, Martin, and I think this is a this is a perennial football problem. This is a football problem that's afflicted teams for years and years and years, not just Chelsea. You know, either you score lots of goals and can't defend for Toffee, or you defend really brilliantly and you can't score goals. Um, you know, the teams that tend to win titles are those that can both defend well and attack well. Uh, and of course, it, there's no, I don't think there's a coincidence there because if you attack well, you quite often leave yourself more open and good teams will punish you. And if and you this, defend really, really, really well, you're too busy defending to score goals. So, you know, this is, this is the, the classic football conundrum, isn't it, JK? Unless it's down to in, individuals, because I think some of the teams have got terrific strikers, for example, who will will take the game away from somebody just with, with the superb moments of skill, which we haven't had for ages now. So, uh, well, has it? Yeah, for ages now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but he was the last one, wasn't he? He could create a goal, win us a game out of nothing. Costa was like that, I thought, you know, um, we haven't had a player like that for a long, long time. I mean, then you, you know, and that, that was the cl another football classic. It's like, a, a, it's a kind of like, we like bingo, won't it? When I've come out with all of them, somebody shout, fan cast. But uh, the other one is, you know, keep it really, really, really tight in defence. Don't concede and see if you can nick a goal. Got a good striker, you will do. Good at you know, if you've got a couple of decent players who can then pull something out of the bag, you can then concentrate on defending more so uh, yeah. and not take any chances and then hope that a goal will come from one of these two outstanding attackers yeah There's a couple of really nice uh that you've been very good with your uh posts on youtube tonight actually um i'm enjoying them neil has come up with another one have you noticed that since cassidy left 
uh, Leicester. They've got him free fall. He also played well for Italy under 21s. Hopefully he will get on, JK. Well, you wonder, that might be a good point. He might play uh, Cassidy instead of um, Mudrick or uh, as the other midfielder. He might give him a go. Yeah. I mean, that definitely. would be interesting. I mean, that might be an opportunity because, you know, I, I don't know what. Obviously, I was, Pox I was is genuinely mindset. surprised at how bad Leicester were when yeah, we they played were, them. Oh, they absolutely uh, agreed. They were. I mean, Lee, I mean you know, yeah. Burnley went up comfortably and are now not doing well at all. And I fear the same problem could happen with Leicester. Leeds played better than them against, they did. against us than Leicester did. <laughs> and, you know, the two goals were that we conceded were, a, well, Disassi, which we've all discussed, and a bit of, you know, class from Mavadidi. Apart from that, it was absolutely nothing. So... Yeah, I don't know if it's exclusively down to Cassidy going or being returned, but there's just seems like I mean, they lost again today, I believe. So it's getting a bit, yeah, a little bit dicey. They're in free fall at the right. moment. They yeah. really are. I think they've got they've got something like one point in the last twenty four. Yeah, hey, hope- and, a, and another good comment on there, <clears throat> uh, Mike Fletcher. The defense changes every week, and that is yeah, literally that is the problem. Every time the defense we have. I've, I'm sure someone could tell us the last time we played the same mm. back four or back three in a game, um, in two consecutive games. What's, what's Chalabar done this time? What the Injured himself. No, I know, well, but what's he, what's he done as an injury? Do we know? We'll never, He's currently we'll undergoing know. his rehabilitation. Uh, they course, could, yes, apparently, yes. they changed that in the day. They, so it was undergoing rehabilitation to earlier, and then they've changed it to some other load of you know, wishy-washy nonsense that doesn't actually tell you what the problem is. Of course not. Of you have course. to leave that to the doctors, of course. Hi, everybody. <laughs> oh, well, OK, let's stick a number on it. JK, what are you going for, mate? 2-2. Two, 2-2. Two. Two, two. I like your style there, conceding two, scoring as well, yeah. but not quite enough. 2-2. Two, two. Martin? I always get concerned with this because I've, we seem to have three or four games where we play well reasonably well and you know string a couple of wins together and then we get kicked in the balls. And we either draw or lose a stupid game that we buy on paper. We should absolutely comfortably win. That said, I think we'll win 2-1. I have no confidence that that's going to happen. But that's what I'm sticking to. And I'm going to get a load of rosary beads out later on and pray. Mm. Well, I'm going for 3-1. Uh, I would go for 3-0. But I just can't see us not conceding a goal at the moment. So I'm going to say 3-1. We... I think I think we're just too good for for Burnley, and they're going to leave themselves open because company's not going to change it. And I think we've got good enough. I think we're playing well up front. I think you know, looking how we're playing up front, uh, we've got a cutting edge that we didn't have before. Players are scoring goals. I'm liking that, but can't see us not conceding. Uh, I'm also taking my nephew, uh, who must be sick to death of me taking him to see Burnley. He must he might he must think I'm a Burnley fan. The first game I ever took him to, we played Burnley and we won three nil. The second game I think I took him to was West Ham, where we lost 2-1. And they play in Claret and Blue, so he possibly thought they were Burnley as well. Then I took him to Burnley away and we won 4-1. And now I'm taking him to see Burnley again. He's he's sick of it. But the last game I took him to was when we lost in the Caribbean Cup final. So uh, hopefully for his sake, we win. I think we will. 3-1 is one. I thought he was, he was winning all the time before that, wasn't he, before the Caribbean Cup? Kind no, of, no, because he, he was at West Ham with me when we lost 2-1. Oh, we lost. Of course he was. I remember seeing Yeah, him. yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's... he's I mean, he's, just, just have to say that I actually... Two for two. Easily say that it might be 4-0, you know? I mean, who, yeah, I know. who who knows at the moment with this side? So you could so you could say Sasha likes football, but he doesn't like Burnley. He likes football, but not Burnley. Burnley can fuck off. No, I, I quite like... I actually, I don't know. Yeah, I quite like I quite like Burnley. I've got, I've got a soft spot for them. I don't know why. Yeah, so, well, it's probably the frostbite. Um, I mean, you know, the, there is the Burnley scale where anyone who's on regular away games always compares the cold as they've been yeah. uh, an away ground in the last 10 years to a game in March 2015. or Yeah, February. Yeah, it was February, March. It was a game at Burnley. Coldest I've ever been at a football froze. ground. It was horrible. And there was someone wearing fucking shorts. Oh, there always <laughs> is, isn't there? I hope they got yeah. hypothermia. Anyway, I've got no but sympathy I think he's, I think he's immune. Yeah, they've probably yeah. got a really ancient tattoo, though, to be fair to them. They've got, you know, a Ken Bates um, Chelsea badge, you know, so they want to show Ken, it Ken off. Bates shagged my wife or something. Yeah, something like that, yeah. yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I, I don't think it was anything like that. I just nearly physically vomited on the terrace when I saw him walk past in a band T-shirt and shorts and me, you know, hopping from one foot to the other, trying to keep warm. 
unable to talk to the person next to me because I was shivering. So no, it was really cold. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, let's hope the boys do the business tomorrow. Uh, we certainly need the win. We need to get some momentum. We need to get some consistency because, you know, it's going to be potluck whether we actually can make the final at Wembley in the FA Cup and win it. Uh, I, I'm convinced, by the way, that we will because I've promised my mate that I'm going to go and watch the cricket with him instead of going to the cup final, should we get in it? And and, I, and I'm thinking now, if we do get to the final, I mean, you know, we might win it. And it might be the last time we ever do, you know, and I'm thinking I can't not be there. So I'm really conflicted. Anyway, enough of that rubbish. Uh, now, I've got some important announcements to make and then we're going to have a game of they played for both. Is that okay? No, you? no. Are we doing that again? Oh, no. Oh, yes. Oh, no. Oh, yes. You've already done it once before, JK. So I know, I'm, hoping, uh, I'm hoping you might do better this time. No, you won't. All right. Uh, first up, uh, this is important. Um, tomorrow, uh, between 1 o'clock and 2.45 p.m., uh, the Chelsea Sport of Trust mental health uh, initiative uh, called Over the Line will be having another hub, uh, which they hold in the foyer of the Copthorn Hotel. So the as you walk into the Copthorn Hotel, just keep going straight, and it's kind of behind the escalators. Um, and there's a little kind of private area uh, where there are some, uh, you know, qualified counsellors from Mind, the charity, mental health charity Mind, if you want to have a chat. If you're struggling with your mental health at the moment, just feeling a bit down, got a few issues that you don't quite know what to do about, they are lovely people who will sit and listen to you and hear what you have to say and be sympathetic. And uh, if you need more help, we'll be able to point you in the right direction or even deal with it themselves because they are counsellors. So they, they've got like private rooms they can take you to if you really are struggling big time. Um, so there we go. So if you want to avail yourself of that service, we try and do it before every home game if we can. It's the first time we've done it for a while. This is all done with the help of the club who have been absolutely lovely about this. Uh, the foundation in particular are brilliant at helping us to organise this and finding mind and getting people from there to do it. So there you go. One o'clock to 2.45 p.m. in the foyer of the Copthorn Hotel. Uh, I shall probably be out and I'm not going to be there myself because I've got my nephew in tow. So, But I'm going to grab some of their cards and leave them in pubs so you can grab some information should you want it. Now, the other thing is, and I haven't got a picture for this, which is a bit naughty of me, but some of you will know uh, the lovely Chris Wright. Do you know Chris Wright, Martin? I've heard the name, yes. Yeah. Do you know I'm, Chris Wright? I know of him, yeah. Good. Chris Wright is a lovely chap, writes for the C, uh, for CFC UK fanzine, and he is doing, he does this every year. He works, I think, with uh, with people who, who are, I think you're supposed to call them neurodivergent, uh, but people who are on the autism spectrum. Um, and he does this every year. So he basically encourages everybody to wear a retro shirt, okay? And uh, if you're going to, you know, have a photograph of it, then, then do it on Twitter and pin it with uh, or hashtag it with autism retro chels. But he's raising money for, uh, for charity, for people, as I said, who are uh, afflicted with autism. I mean, maybe that you wouldn't say afflicted because actually, the, no, you, you know, I, my, my, I mean, daughter, my daughter yeah. is autistic. I've sure. got a lot of clients who are, who, who are ASD and they're some of the nicest people and most intelligent people I've had the privilege of working with. And I've learned a huge amount from them. I'm just trying to find, there we go. It, it, this is where you need to go. If you want to donate, because basically, um, you know, he's raising money. I'm trying to find who he's raising money for. Sorry, Chris, this is very unprofessional of me. Um, while I'm, while I'm doing, I oh, know here we go. He's, oh, there we go. He's fundraising for the National Autistic Society. And I can, I can t definitely vouch for the fact that they are a very worthwhile bunch of people to raise money for. So here we go. Uh, Chelsea Retro Shirt Day, Saturday the 30th of March versus Burnley. All Chelsea supporters can get involved whether you're going to the game or not. Post a picture of you with one of your retro shirts or anything Chelsea Retro to Twitter or Instagram using the hashtag, hashtag Autism Retro Chelsea. Last year we raised 900 quid, so it'd be great to beat that total. Many thanks for all your support on this bloody, bloody, blah. So there we go. And Chris is uh, on, on Twitter, and uh, you can you can find him on Twitter, uh, at Chris Wright ZZ. And last time we did this, there you go. I've got a picture from the last time we did this. Look at that picture. Isn't that lovely? Me and Tony. And there's what, – what's, what's my retro shirt, JK? Uh, it, it's something you put on. Um, and it's, no, but what, um, what, what, you know, what, what does it denote? What era is that? Uh, uh, 2006. Mm, no. 2004. Mm, no. 2000. 2003. Nope. 2002. Yeah. 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 I think it was two, three. Uh, 
So there we go. It's a wonderful. That. Yeah, I should have got it right. Yeah. Wonderful black one. It's still got the Bates badge, you see. So it's. Uh, yeah, no, no, no. I was remembering it was. Yeah, Bates, it would have been. Yeah, I've got it right. I'm so sorry, everybody. I should yeah, know better. That's... But a lovely picture of me and Tony in the cock, me looking rather happy. I think fantastic I'd had a picture of you both. Yes. Fantastic. I think you I'd had a you, beer or two. You, you don't look a bit like Pochettino, Judge. Oh, no. Oh, oh I, don't, I, I forgot to mention all of that. I, oh, no, I mentioned at the beginning. I no need to. Yeah, you it. did. Yeah. Just, no need. <laughs> it, it's just, it was just, it's just highly amusing, if slightly irritating, hey. that, that particular account. I, I mean, you know, somebody's prepared to make a YouTube, uh, like we do a show every two shows a week, which we put on YouTube. Somebody did a show entirely on me and the Chelsea fan cast selling those t shirts. Uh, whose head are we living in rent free? Is all I'm saying. Um, anyway, uh, that's what the youth say, isn't it? Uh, right, yeah. so there we go. Give uh, your head a wobble is what they say as well. Give you head a wobble, mate, you muggy head little wobble, mate. Come on. You muggy lemon. So there you go. Look, support Chris. It's a great thing to be supporting. Um, as I said, I work with a lot of people who are on the spectrum and uh, they need uh, and deserve a lot of help and support. So there we go. I shall be now thinking about what retro shirt I might wear tomorrow. I've got an idea but I'll think about it for tomorrow. I might wear a really old one. I might I might do my Bobby Tambling one, JK. I'm not allowed to wear one, Chidge, because you're not no. allowed to wear your colours in... Uh, uh... Well, well, bring one and have a photograph taken with somebody, with a friend of yours tomorrow, uh, Out, always, outside of Aussies. I could always wear it underneath, couldn't I, yeah. Chidge? Lift it up as if I'm showing yeah. my my, um, my paunch. Yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna have a have a good yeah. scoot around, see what I can find. I'm feeling I put on a few pounds recently because I've not I've I've not been swimming recently. So uh, I don't think I'm. There was an other one that we got, which is the one with Menang on the back, which is that kind of those uh, layers of blue and uh, kind of horrible lime green trimmings that we wore in about 2009, 10. Do you remember that? I always think of Maluda when I think of that shit. Yeah, that's not green one. No, it's kind of right. like dark blue, light blue, dark blue, light blue. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It only happened like one season, didn't it? Just a one season off, wasn't yeah. it? I think. Yeah. yeah. I could wear my, my Emirates one, with which the famous one with Chidge on the back, because because uh, um, Slavanovic was so shit. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, it's time for JK. Ah, uh, they played for both. da 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 da, -da. I quickly remembers to go and grab. Do you want to see my allotment plan? That's much more interesting. Woo. I was planting uh, planting spinach and radishes this afternoon. Oh, you're a lucky man. Did you yeah. catch the sun a bit, Jidge? Did I? No, no. I'm not as red as I was the other week, though. No, I've got I've got a, a better light up here, actually. Uh, it's it's not a warm... I had a warm glow candle light. Oh, now okay. I have a, a, a cold white one, and I'm less red. Well, at least I'd like to think I am. Well, you were auditioning for How the West Was Won. I thought I was auditioning for Talk Sports Morning Show, really. Morning! <laughs> anyway, right. You ready? Yeah. There are, well, there were, there are mm. 19 players oh, who have represented both Chelsea and Burnley during their careers. And they are, Martin? Uh, okay, let's start with Ian Matson. You are correct. Jim Thompson. Oh! Yes! That's approaching it. approaching it from both ends there. Gary Cahill. Yes. John Harley. Yes. Frank Sinclair. Yes. Um, was it... Um, did Dave Besant play? I can't remember. Did he nope. play? No. No. Oh, was it Turnbull then? No. Nope. Uh, was it um, Sullivan? No. Nope. Oh, okay. That's gone through my list, list of <laughs> Is that you Ian done, Britain. JK? <laughs> no, I've still got a couple of other outfield players. Ian got... Britton is correct, by the way. Ian Britton, yeah, Ian Britton. Um, Damien Matthew. Fucking hell, JK. Yes. I just happened to remember why I was interested in Damien Matthew, because I actually thought he was quite a decent player. And uh, and I think he went to Palace, and I think he then went off. But I was always bemused as to why he never particularly made it, because he... He played really well for us for a season, and and uh, I'm, I'm, occasionally happens. You just think, what, what happened? Why did they get transferred, and why did they not then, you know, get attract interest or play terribly well for the club? Anyway, yeah. So he's he's always re remained in my uh, in my psyche. Right. So and there Jack you go, Cork. Damien Math. Sorry, it's Jack Cork. Yes. yes. Where is he? Yeah. Well done, Martin. Um. 
God. Did um did did Chico Hamilton or was it Villa he then played for? It was Claret and Blue. I think a Chico Hamilton played for He didn't Villa. play for Burnley. He didn't play for Villa, it was Villa, yeah. Um uh, uh, John Dunn. Nope. Oh god, my other goalkeeper gone. Okay. Uh, there are no goalkeepers on this list as far as I can thank work. You, thank out. you. That's just as well, because otherwise I'd have carried on. Uh uh. I don't know, Nathaniel Chalaber? Yeah. Oh, bloody hell, he did. Okay. Um... John O'Rourke? No. Uh, Jim Barron? No. Okay, now. Uh, 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 uh. How many have we got so far? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Only ten, ten left. You're halfway through. <laughs> Are they ten, ten of people that we should know? Is what you're saying? You should know one, two, three, four, five, at least five that you would have heard of. And and I make that six because you should have heard of another one, J.K. Your era. era. Your era. Nineteen oh five. No, uh, that's right. Yes, Fatty Folk. Nope. No, I goal said no keepers. goalkeepers. <laughs> ah, sorry. <laughs> There's one player that you sh that we've actually talked about tonight. Fafana, David Datra, well Fafana. Done. Well done. Oh, of course, blimey! How oh, you forget about that obviousness? Don't I you? forgot he played for Chelsea. Never mind, fucking Burnley. <laughs> There's uh, another player who's played for. L we loaned out to so many teams before he settled. To a, a team that uh, we don't like at all. In fact, we uh, hate. Totting, Tottington. No, we all hate Leeds and Leeds and Leeds. Oh, fuck it. Bamford. Yes. Patrick Bamford. And then there's a player that we signed as a we, 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 buy one, get one free. Danny Drinkwater. Yes, Martin is very clever. I love it. Right, player from the seventies, J.K. You wouldn't pay to watch him. You wouldn't pay. To I, know, I, know, I know who it is. I'm just enjoying him. I, I actually here. said the fucking name, and you still don't get it. Tuppenston. What? Tun <laughs> you wouldn't pay a quid. Uh, Quinton. Um... Oh, God. <laughs> Somebody take the pain away. Please, Lampton. No, Jerry Payton. Oh God, a goalkeeper. Is he? You said there weren't any <laughs> goalkeepers. <you bastard. laughs> I lied. I lied. What can I say? All right, you, you, both, you both stepped on a fucking rake there. <laughs> <laughs> we did, didn't we? There's one, two. Sorry, one, two, three. Four left, five left. One of them, he made ten appearances in 1967. Joe Kirkup. No. I, I, I'm Colin Waldron. Oh, fuck. Yes. Of course. Centre half. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, God. I knew there was... Oh, God. Now, this, oh, the, this, oh, this oh, next chat... Barry. He gets ridiculous. I can remember. He was signed from Berry. I can remember that. For God's right. sake. Why? This, this, this next chap, this next chap is arguably one of the most famous players ever to play for Chelsea. Jimmy Greaves. No, because he didn't play for Burnley. No, I know he didn't. I just, you just, you said he was one of the most famous. Though. Well, think, think along those lines. Really famous footballer. Ray Pointer. No. No. <laughs> it was an England international. Kind of war years. Second Tommy World Lawton. War. Yes. Well done. You're not going to get the next two, so I'll give them to you. Uh, Billy Gray. Oh, uh, Billy. Oh, 1949 God. to 53. 172 appearances, 15 goals. Yeah. Uh, Peter O'Dowd. Oh, yes. 1931 to 33. 86 appearances, no goals. England International, 1932 to 33. Three caps. This is an interesting chap. Max Seberg, a reserve uh, in 1906-07. As a German national, he was interred at the start of World War I, but released after a couple of weeks. 
Interned, surely, not interred. Interred, so is that just you die? You're right. Uh, interned. You're right. No, you're right. My, uh, Nathan has written interred. interred. Well, perhaps he was locked up in a cave. I did my Ron he... Burgundy, though. I just read what was written on the he piece of paper. Buried, he was buried alive, right? <laughs> he was. Very lovely. We dug him up a couple of weeks later. Because, yeah, they suddenly thought, well, we've got a. Oh, shit, it. there's something rattling down there. Yeah. They thought, well, because we buried him alive, we'll let him let him play for Chelsea. Come on, mate! You you're not you you know you're not supposed to bury the Germans alive. All right, go and dig him up. So there you go, Max Seberg. Uh, and last but by no means least, this is rather sad. Um, Philip Smith, uh, who uh, made one appearance in 1910 and was killed in action on the 29th of September 1918. I wonder if we might find out a little bit more about him on our wonderful World War One tour in the summer you that's never right know. Near, that's right near the armistice isn't it it's not yeah so far away. yeah a couple of months mate very sad yeah. so there you go that's uh they played for both i thought you did quite respect res yeah, that was a respectable performance by you both actually you, you came out with some real humdingers there jk it's, though. It's, well i've and I always remember jim thompson because he was um he played he played a lot in the uh, in those uh dockety sides yeah uh, and I never thought he was terribly good, so I was intrigued to see that he he went he went off to Burnley. I wasn't surprised. Made forty seven uh, appearances. Yeah, yeah, but he he was a bit peripheral. And whereas Waldron came in with a great element of hope for him to um, from Berry, and um, I thought was a, a bit of a plank. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, it didn't surprise me that he did. He was soon transferred away. Um, but that was an era where people came in and played dreadfully and were sold, as opposed to the current era where people come and play dreadfully and uh, we encourage the contracts. Exactly. They can't, they can't be sold. Yeah, exactly. they are. Anyway, uh, thanks obviously to Paul Carter and uh, his wonderful website, stamford-bridge.com. Uh, you can find Paul on Twitter at stamford underscore bridge. Check out the Chelsea Heritage Group, chelseaheritagepartnership.com, and you can find them on Twitter at cfc underscore heritage and one day i will learn to say x and not twitter but not yet right uh jk you could always say formerly known as formerly known as the artist formerly known as twitter exactly right uh we will be back on tuesday night unless i think tuesday nights or actually tuesday night's a good night to do it because we got we got united on uh thursday haven't we all right so uh, it'd be a good day to like, if we did it on Monday, we'll know nothing about what's happening. Whereas nah. on Tuesday, nah. we might have a bit more info. Right. So we will be back on Tuesday night with me, uh, JK. Also, I've got the week off next week, so uh, I won't be completely fried on a Tuesday evening. So we'll be back on Tuesday night with me, JK and Dan Silver at 7.30 p.m. to report. Hey, back. Yeah. To report back on the match against Burnley and uh, look forward to the match against Manchester United. Uh, so there you go. Um, that's probably all you need to know. Uh, now, you can flash it. No, you need to know this too. You can follow the show on all the social media at Chelsea Fancast. Me at Stanford Chidge, Jonathan at Jonathan Kidd, and Martin at Martin underscore Wickham. Martin, how lovely to see you. Yeah, look, th likewise. Thanks for having me. Uh, Always a pleasure, mate. Yeah, indeed. Um, bit of a bit of a, qu a nice, quiet week to ease myself back in. All right. Okay. And uh, when, when uh, you're not, you're not there tomorrow, you're working, aren't you? I am, and I've, Fucked up my diary, so I'm missing the United game as no! well. So, yeah, I've had a, I've had a complete shocker. Oh, so, my, um, my, my, mind you, um, if I don't go to games, we tend to win. So. Okay, that's well worth noting. Yeah. Will I see you for Everton? Uh, probably not. As oh, well, no. no, I'm working. That the month, the move to Monday fucked me on that. So, yeah, yeah. Oh, mate, yeah. really sorry about that. I haven't seen no, it. It, quite, it, it is what it is. It is what it is. Hopefully, you know, wet. West Ham, if not, definitely the last game of the season. <laughs> there we go. Well, I, I think I'll be seeing you next Friday. Indeed. Because I know you're back on then, so there we go. Can't wait to see you then. Uh, Mr. Kidd, as always, a delight. So, I missed you on Monday. It's a shame I couldn't do the show. I was feeling too ill. So uh, I, mean, I hope you had uh, a nice weekend off, by the way, because you had Friday off, didn't you? I loved it. I think you're yeah. doing it more, actually. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Going to renegotiate the contract, are you? Yeah, if we could, yeah. Thanks very much. Yeah. I might. I have yeah. to ditch the t-shirts if that's the case. Yeah. Alternatively, I, perhaps I could do your job, and you could, um, you could then do mine. You know. So. You're most welcome to. Most welcome. You know, I or, could do with a break. Or perhaps not. Or perhaps not. I like doing the show. I I generally missed you on Friday. I mean, we had a great fun because it was all about the World War One, and we had Alex and all of that lot in tow. But 
Uh, I missed you on Friday and I missed you on Monday because I was looking forward to doing the show, but I, I was just, I felt shit. So I thought, you know what? I'm not going to do it. We better work out another day to do in off the post. Otherwise it will. Well, maybe this week because I do have the week off. So I have a bit of time on my hands. I'll reach pet. Well, we I'll get my people to talk to your people. We can't do Thursday. All right. Well, we're at the game, aren't we? Yeah, we can't, can't do, do Friday. Th- can't do Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. So we're, we're left with Wednesday, I think. That might be a possibility. Okay. We'll have a think. All right. I'll read pet. Deal. Lovely stuff. Uh, you've been brilliant tonight. Loved it. Enjoyed it. Lovely to see you both. Uh, you lot out there uh, who listened on Mixler and, of course, watched on YouTube or Facebook. Thank you for listening slash watching. See you on Friday until no, what I'm talking about. See you on Tuesday. I'd be very careful. I was so focused on not saying see you next Tuesday that I. And then you just said it anyway. I know. Well, exactly. That's how I roll. <laughs> we'll see you on Tuesday. All right. Uh, until then, keep it blue, keep it carefree, and keep it chills. Hey, oh, chill, chill. Chill. Oh, you good boys. Ah, 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 ah.